everyone, and welcome to the Transatlantic Call-In Show, the show where you can call in for free and talk to, well, this week, just one trans person. But usually you can call in and talk to two trans people and get differing views. But this week, you will only get my view. So that's probably a terrible thing. But you can call in for free by clicking the link in the description, or you can call in on the number written at the bottom below if you're in America, and I don't know whether that costs you money or not, but you can do it that way if you like. We have some space on the lines, but they probably will all fill up. Uh, so call in right now if you want a chance of being on the show. We prioritize anti-trans callers or transphobic or people who just have concerns. Um, so if that's you, then call in and let's, let's have a chat. Um, if you don't know me, I am Katie Montgomery. I am one of the regulars here. Uh, we were going to be having Arden Hart tonight, but unfortunately she is unwell. So everyone wish her well and hope she gets better soon. Um, but yeah, this is, uh, this is the best show on this channel and I'm not just totally winging it and it's all going to go totally fine and, uh, yeah, should be great. <laughs> Um, if you would like to join in the show, then the best way to do that is obviously to call in. But also you can send a super chat. And if you send a super chat of $5 or more, then I have to read it out at the end. And usually we do a little competition to see who gets the most votes. Uh, but obviously I'm going to win that this week. So that's good because <laughs> I often don't win that. Um, and it will be less depressing unless, of course... I get zero super chats, in which case I am definitely the loser. In fact, really, if I get less than 25, because usually we try and see who has the most votes after about 25 super chats and then someone has a punishment. So if I get less than 25, then I guess I've lost. So maybe we can try and make that not the case. Um, but yeah, you can uh, send us in a super chat the normal way, just as you're on your way scrolling down the page and you're clicking like, and you click and subscribe, then you can scroll down to the chat, get involved, talk to our amazing mods and stuff, and then send a super chat if you like. Um, but yeah, uh, that's, uh, that's that's the best ways to join in the show. Normally at this point, I would be like, Anne Arden, how has your week been? Obviously our week isn't going very well. Uh, my week isn't going very well either because it's autumn, and autumn is shit, and it sucks all of my life out, makes me feel depressed because it's dark and cold and rainy, and if anyone disagrees with me, they are objectively wrong because autumn is like supernaturally bad. It is like immoral. Uh, anyone who likes autumn is a liar or is a devil of some kind. Um, <laughs> uh, this is an atheist show as well, by the way. But um, autumn is just so trash. I, I, I think that the only reason that anyone can say they like autumn is one, if they're an alien and they've only ever seen pictures or postcards or something of this like Photoshop fake autumn where all the leaves are nice colors, or if they've never been to the UK, because I'm sure in some places, I'm sure if you live in, like, I've been to Japan in the autumn and that was beautiful and it was like warm and wasn't too rainy. And I'm sure like some other places are amazing in the autumn, but my goodness, the UK is just utter trash. So if you're British and you like autumn, then that's the other reason I want you to call in. Either call in to tell me trans people don't deserve human rights, or call in to tell me that you think the worst time of the year uh, is actually good and you actually think like bad things are good or whatever. Um, and they're, don't they're really the calls call I'll be in for that, today. please. The, just, since some <laughs> people think that you're serious, don't call in about that. We're not taking that. <laughs> Okay, okay. Well, you can super chat about that movie. Um, I've been fid forbidden by the cis from talking about autumn. Though I'm going to try and squeeze it into every single call about how autumn is bad. Anyway, um, That's maybe fine. we should just get onto the topic of waste calls. <laughs> <laughs> maybe we should get onto the actual topic of trans rights by looking at the polls from last week. So every week we ask a poll so you can join in on our channel. If you go to the community tab, you can vote and have an argument with people in the comments. Last week, well, not last week, or maybe last week, two weeks ago, there it says, uh, because the show wasn't on last week. Um, last time we asked, do you think becoming more transphobic will help right-wing political parties win elections? Um, <clears throat> I think this is a, an interesting question, because if you ask most of them, that, well, if you ask them, they would just lie about it. But if you were a right-wing politician in a room with just other right-wing politicians and their strategists, 
they've clearly in a lot of countries decided that yes being more transphobic will help them win like that's clearly i mean explicitly what the british conservative party have done um their like main strategy guy just said it in an interview he was like well we can't win on brexit anymore because that's already happened so we've got a win on trans rights and and the culture war um but like we saw it in australia we've seen it in most of the usa um seen it in canada like lots of right-wing politicians seem to not really have much else like in the usa you've got this trump cult and stealing the election and um all your sort of general warmongering but still for a lot of people trans rights is like what their number one issue uh, of right-wing reactionaries i mean and it's definitely one of the major issues in the british media and i know that some politicians have made it like their entire thing i know there was there's at least some politicians in australia recently who have been sort of pivoting where campaigning against trans rights is their main issue but uh, and it, it is horrible and it does make a difference to trans people's lives and you know the media makes people's lives worse and increases hate crimes and all that kind of stuff which is all things that they probably want but it doesn't seem to be winning them elections it seems from the elections we've had where the politicians have pivoted to making this their main issue it seems if anything it loses them elections um i know we've seen it like there's been a round of elections in the usa since this has been uh, one of the major focuses and there's also been a round of elections in australia um and all of the politicians that sort of tripled down on it have done terribly and I really don't think it's going to save the British Conservatives either. The reality is, and I was talking to some, um, a couple of people this week, a couple of different people who DM'd me, who I think were either younger in age or younger as in haven't come out or have come out more recently, feeling despairing and terrified about sort of the political landscape and kind of wanting reassurance for me for me to say no most people fight for trans rights and it's just a you know powerful few i actually think and maybe this isn't so nice to hear most people don't give a fuck like most people don't care about trans rights either way it may be if you kind of pin them down and they had to give a yes or no they would have an opinion but if it was like you know two politicians who are kind of the same and one of them's tropic but also supports their favorite football team like they legit might just put support for their favorite football team or whatever over rights for trans people not because they particularly care or they hate trans people just because they just don't give a fuck and so when you're a politician you only have like limited time and space to sort of promote yourself you know you're constantly one of the things that trump was so good at is constantly getting attention on himself when you're not you know kind of a um, a mastermind at getting attention like Donald Trump was, um, you really have to fight so that people know who you are and know what your message is. And if you're using that limited space up to to like go up there and say you think trans women are men or something, sure, like the the crazies and the right wing Nazi wackos and stuff, they're all going to love it and they are going to cheer you on and you're going to get some yes men from that, uh, you know, sort of talking in your ear and saying it was the best thing you've ever done. But the reality is that most people will be like, oh, well, I, I care so little about this, I'm not even paying attention. And then next time someone says, oh, what do you think of this politician? You'd be like, I don't even remember anything they stand for. Um, and lots of the time people vote on just what they remember. So yeah, I, do, I, I can, to me, it makes sense that it's not an election winning issue either way, like also, I don't think that anyone fighting for trans rights is going to be an election winning issue. Um, I don't think many people care, but the fact that it's not an election winning issue for transphobic people does give me hope because the reason there's all this attacks on trans rights and horror in the media and stuff is because they think it's politically useful. And as soon as they realize that it's not, they'll give up and it'll stop. And then we can carry on just slowly improving trans rights with small reforms and stuff like we've been doing for the last few decades. So 
maybe that's a bit more depressing than the idea of like there's some kind of evil that's just gripped hold of us and we're going to overthrow it and then suddenly 90% of the world is supportive or something like that but that's just delusional to be honest um so yeah i i think that in in conclusion <laughs> 69 in conclusion 69 percent of people uh i agree with i just i don't know there's just not enough like that there, there were a lot of gender critical people and and like QAnon people and true believers of transphobia the kind of people who will ruin their own life in order to be transphobic that there are a lot of them and there are there are too many of them but not on the kind of scale of winning elections not in the kind of like this is a big political block that we have to care about um they're just they're just scraping the barrel i think so in conclusion i agree with that let's look at what poll we are asking this week and i don't actually know what it is um so maybe jimmy's conjured it up and uh we'll see a a cis take oh wait or maybe it's it. the one i you suggested wrote... last week actually yeah <laughs> I yeah. do know. Not only do I know, I was really fussy about the wording of it. So <laughs> um, the, the question we're asking this week was relevant to what was going on last week. And the question is, is it a good thing that trans women are winning beauty contests like Miss Universe? And this is in relation to the news that <clears throat> Miss Portugal, so the winner of the Portuguese branch of Miss Universe. I don't really know how it works, but I assume every country has their own little one and then there's like a world finals or something. The winner of Portugal's one is a trans woman and she joins the winner of the Netherlands one, uh, who is also a trans woman. So two out of a few, I don't know how many there are, uh, of the winners of the respective countries uh, are trans, which is it's definitely interesting. Um, I've got a, a few things to say about it. I mean, firstly, uh, the, the, the first thing I thought of was finally a competition in which trans women are dominating because even if there is 200 countries that enter Miss Universe, I have no idea, but let's just say there is 200, then two out of 200 would be 1%. And 1% is more, I think, than the number of, you know, the percentage of trans people in the world. So that would be trans women overperforming because obviously if you uh, expected them to perform about their rate, then that'd be about 0.3%. So we should get one every three years uh, in that case. So, or two every three years, whatever it is. But so this, this is finally us dominating something by having two people <laughs> through to the finals, but that's more than we've ever had in any sport. So that's, uh, that's interesting. But I think that there's two, there's kind of like a cascade of reactions to this. The first reaction that we'll see is people being like, or oh, from the point of view of the people probably watching this show, people who think that trans rights are a good thing, you'll be like, oh, that's good. That's good that a trans woman won something and is being celebrated. And it's good that whatever organization has supported us to do that, good for her. And then probably my next thought would be, but beauty contests are outdated sexist rubbish that should be abolished. Um, and I think you can think both of those at the same time. I think it's good that trans people like or get considered alongside cis people and are considered like normal and um, just allowed to exist. And we can be like, oh, you know, good for her personally. This is probably good for her life. Maybe she'll get a load of money for it. Maybe that'll make her better off. Good for her, you know. Um, and also, maybe personally, she doesn't think beauty contests are a load of sexist rubbish. Presumably not, seeing as she's entered it. And in that sense, you know, if I was her friend, I would be happy for her as a friend. And I'm just like indirectly happy for someone living their best life or whatever. And I wouldn't want to shut down beauty contests in order to hurt any of the people involved in them or believe in them or having a good time. But they are sexist rubbish, and I think we should teach people that they're sexist rubbish, um, and that like rating women on how attractive and how I don't know submissive or whatever the other qualifications for this kind of thing are is just garbage and contributing to making the world worse for all women. Um, <clears throat> but then there's also the kind of third layer of reaction to this, <laughs> which is, I think, oh, good for her, but this is kind of 
you know, why do we even have Miss Universe contests anymore? And then I click on the link and all of the top comments are from the most like rancid, a basement dwelling men that you've ever encountered saying how disgusted they are by looking at her. Um, so instantly, suddenly this becomes more about reacting to the reactionaries and you just like, I want to defend her and anyone else, any other trans person in this position from all of the ridiculous transphobic attacks on them. And that then becomes like my number one reaction and kind of dwarfs the other responses. But it is, um, I guess I pointed out at the time how all of these guys are like, they always do the vomit emoji or you say they're disgusted or something, but they're not like, it's so embarrassing like this you can just go and look at the pictures in a conventionally attractive sense she's just like obviously there's a reason why she's won miss universe she's you know one of the most beautiful women in the world by today's western beauty standards that's just like obviously true and um, we can argue about whether beauty standards are terrible and all those kind of things which they are but all of these men commenting vomit emojis are not feminists critiquing the existence of beauty contests. They are misogynistic dickheads who think a woman's entire value is her appearance and also has status. And a trans woman's status is low because they are, you know, patriarchy dickheads. And therefore they have to act out their disgust, even though they're obviously not disgusted. Like they obviously find her attractive. And that's why they have to go out of their way to do this huge performance about how disgusted they are. Because if if you re like if there was really a contest where a woman who they weren't attracted to won it, it's just, you know, like a generic cis woman, they wouldn't even respond to it unless she was, you know, ugly in their mind in some other way where, you know, she was the the wrong sexuality or the wrong race or disabled or something else, some other thing that they can act out their disgust to as a form of, I mean, virtue signaling to other reactionary dickheads. So, um, yeah, I don't know that that's the reason why I was really specific. Cause Jimmy wanted to have something like, is it good for oh, trans women to win contests or something? I don't know what it was. And I was like, no, it has to, has to create the discussion about whether, which is better, trans women, women winning things or abolishing beauty contests? So um, you can you can go and have fun in the comment section on that one. <laughs> Be nice to each other. Um, but I think it's my time to get onto some callers. Was, my argument was that neither of them did it. That you have to explain what you just explained to even get much of the other reaction. But you know, whatever, it's all good. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see. <laughs> I mean, it's already been going seven days. We already know the results, but it'll go 14 when we reveal. And now I've said my bit, maybe the results will flip. Who knows? Um, or maybe now you've said your bit, the results will flip. Uh, anyway. Well, I didn't say it. I didn't, I didn't give my position. I just said I don't. Anyway, I, I don't think the results will flip, but we'll see. You're right. Yeah. But anyway, we are about to move on to some callers. So if you would like to call in, we still have a little bit of space on the lines. I can probably fit in some more people. So now is the time you can call in free or on the number below. You can click on the link in the description. Call in. We will do our best to get to you. We, I say we, I mean I will do my best to get to you. And we're going to start off talking to Nate in California. Nate, you're on the line and I hear you want to talk about sports. And I just want to start before you say anything by just saying, if I like sigh a lot in this, it's not because I don't value your contribution. It's just because I do not care about sports, but I'm willing to have this discussion with you. Nate, let's go. <laughs> Excellent. Thank you for taking my call, Katie. Um, That's okay. And uh, I do, I've seen, I've, sorry, can you hear me? Yep, we can hear you fine. Go for it. Yeah, so sorry about that. Yeah, so I uh, was going to say, just quickly, I want to pass a compliment. I heard you on the Atheist Experience a few days ago. I think uh, your thoughts were stellar. Um, this was a few weeks ago, I'm thinking, right? But regardless, <clears throat> I, um, the subject is really, I do have, you know, I have all respect for what people identify as 100%. Right, I'm on their yeah. side, uh, and yeah, for pronouns and rights, inclusivity, 
everything. But what happens is uh, when I looked at it, right, uh, if I take the example of, say, sport, I know you just said you hate sport, which is fine. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not a big fan. It's all right. Either, it's all right. But uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, but the thing is, if you take sport, right, let's say you have somebody who's, who's identified as a uh, male at birth and uh, in middle age, and somewhere in mid, mid, middle school, let us say, right, roughly speaking, they kind of uh, transition into uh, identifying as uh, a woman, gender-wise. And then, uh, so, but they have all the infrastructure, right, of a male person. Uh, so in general, right, I'm not, not making a blanket statement across everything, but in general, we know that in, at least in our species, uh, males are generally stronger and bigger than females, right? Sex-wise. Yeah. Uh, and let's say this person then grows up <clears throat> and starts participating in sporting events, right? What happens is this person easily sweeps up, uh, wins all the events, right? Simply because this person happens to be competing with the rest of the contingent who naturally are kind of physically less endowed than themselves, right? <laughs> so that's where I have a dichotomy in my head. Sorry, right. you're saying something? Oh no, no. I was just um, oh. I'm enjoying your yeah, uh, your phraseology. I like I liked endowed <laughs> and I liked um, infrastructure. <laughs> Infra, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, so, I, I know what you're saying. Uh, you're obviously I mean, I'm, trying I'm not, to be I'm not, polite. I'm not a science person, so yeah, I'm not a science person. Yeah. I'm trying to get as close as possible to yeah. So the thing is, uh, I'm not a science person, meaning I love and adore science, but I'm not a trained scientist. That's what I mean. So uh, uh, the dichotomy I have in my head is, on the one hand, you know, uh, in the interest of being inclusive, right, I should be standing in support of trans women who, let's say, participate, as an example, in a swimming event, right? But then the other other part of my head says, you know what, somehow this comes across as being unfair to the rest of the contingent of women in that race who right. have perhaps put in their whole lives. Yeah. And they simply so they I, simply are blown away, right? So I'm not yeah. sure how to so, analyze this and where would you be in this thought process? Yeah, sure. So I think I think uh, working out how to analyze it is a good way to put it. Like that's that's the first thing we want to do, rather than diving in with strong opinions, is think how do we want to analyze right. this. And I think the first thing we need yeah. to do is realize that there are lots of uh, different aspects to this. Um, so it's very easy to kind of imagine this situation where you know someone transitions after puberty and then they enter something and then they win and win, 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 win. And then it gets to top and suddenly they're getting gold medal in the Olympics. And you'd be like, that just seems unfair to me. But the thing is that hasn't ever happened once, uh, like ever, anywhere, anywhere in the world. And that's because there's loads of actually different factors to this. And we need to consider all of it rather than just imagining one kind of hypothetical. Um, if so one, one easy divide we can make straight away is, whether we're talking about high level world class sporting events like the Olympics, or if we're talking about school sports or, you know, fun after school clubs or local football leagues or whatever, that kind of thing. Because there is actually a big difference between those things. If we were to say all trans women are banned from all sports, like we just brought down that regulation straight away. Sure, you would stop this kind of hypothetical idea of a trans woman getting all gold medals at the Olympics, but that's going to be like, you know, who, how many people enter the Olympics? Like 10,000 people every four years across the entire world. It's hardly anyone compared to the, well, you know, worldwide millions of, of people who just play sports after work, after school, just for fun. They, you know, they play on their local sports team and they're not going to really win anything and they're not world class or even county class, you would be banning all of those people too from just doing their hobbies. And you would have to ask like, to what end is in this situation, you could even if we just ignored transition, ignore medical transition entirely, and we just said, right, 
let's just ignore trans people and just say cis men we just pick one random cis man in every town and he can play on the women's team like you could argue it's unfair but it's not a huge deal and in fact that does kind of happen for local sports anyway loss of local sports leagues they don't have enough people for a whole women's team or even a whole men's team and it's all mixed like co-ed or however you want to say it like one of my uh, friends plays softball in the uk and softball is not a big sport here so it's just all mixed mm -hmm. sex because they don't really have enough for, i mean maybe they do for some places i'm not an expert if anyone softball players watching this i don't know the things but the majority of it seems to be all just mixed sex and that's because they've they're not like oh this is hyper competitive and it's going to the world championship they're just like we all want to play sport and we just kind of get on with it and i so i think we need to recognize that there's a distinction and this isn't like a binary there's there's obviously a range and you could start off at your local levels and then you could start winning and then you could become the county champion and then the you know then the regional champion or whatever and suddenly maybe that's an issue <clears throat> so we need to look first at what level and what we're trying to achieve and the reason i say this is because i'm not going to say like obviously i don't care about sports personally <clears throat> and i'm not going to say that um sports don't matter because to some people it's their entire life you know some people entering sports is their reason to exist and watching sports they love it and all this kind of stuff so it obviously it obviously does matter to people and it it changes some people's lives and some people get rich off it and all all this other kind of stuff but as far as things go it doesn't matter as much as other things like if i had to fight for one thing for trans people i would rather that trans people all had health care than access to sports. And that's just not for trans people. That's also for you or for any, you know, any other group of people. It's more important that they're like free and able to live in society without getting attacked on the street. It's more important that they, um, you know, have access to healthcare. It's more important they have access to a right to vote and all of these other things, which I think are more fundamental issues. And the reason I say this is because excluding trans people, excluding trans women specifically but excluding trans people from sports isn't just free it's not like oh well yeah you could just sit out this one um because obviously it's become a like international high level conversation and the loudest people fighting for banning trans women aren't people who give a fuck about women's sports in the slightest they also just happen to be the people who are fighting to take away trans people's human rights in every other aspect. And when a organization like UK cricket or whatever, someone said, Oh yeah, okay, we, we're giving in, we're going to agree with, you know, the, the transphobes on this one and ban trans women from p participating in cricket at every single level or something, then that sends a huge signal across society saying <clears throat> trans people in our, in our sport, aren't welcome, they're second class citizens, and they shouldn't be involved in this at any level, you know, not even local leagues, then suddenly th that puts trans people in danger of um, being treated as second class citizens, being looked down on, it can contribute to increasing hate crimes, it can contribute to them, you know, if you lose your one hobby, you if you're just playing at local levels and suddenly you're banned from your hobby, that, that causes depression in people. There are so many things that weigh up this. And I would argue yeah. <clears throat> that at the lowest levels of sports, when it's just local leagues, the, the harm you would cause to trans people as a population is worse. The value of that, the like negative value of that is itself worse than some perceived unfairness at local level sports because i just don't think that really matters um the other thing so, so that's like this is quite a big topic sorry i'm doing a lot of talking but i just want to kind of set out just a, a couple of points no, to start it's, off it's with making a lot of and, sense yeah. Yeah. although I, I might disagree yeah. with a couple of small points but please please do proceed yeah yeah okay cool thanks um so like in in that sense we i would say that that alone I mean, oh, that is one strong point for including at, at least some trans women, most trans women, whatever. On the other hand, I can totally see we should say, well, top level sporting at the Olympics, at world championship levels, we need this like hyper fair environment. And perhaps an example is we need to drug test 
top level athletes because there is such a high pressure um and socially and also monetarily and and other things such a high pressure for these athletes that a lot of them try and cheat like it's a real thing that every single year there will be someone trying to cheat in every single top level sport and if we don't drug test people if we don't have regulations and restrictions they will do it and it'll be unfair i don't think many people are taking drugs and risking their health and futures and lives and freedom potentially to be better at local level football like it just i mean maybe some are maybe that's me being ignorant but th there's obviously different pressures here and and it's a similar weighting we should place on creating the categories for fairness for trans people and also intersex people at, at like top level sports at the top level the reality is we have to draw some kind of line uh sex isn't a binary and we can't just say oh well we'll just see if you've got a y chromosome or not because then we can see whether you can enter sports or we'll just see if you have yeah, ovaries or not mm -hmm. because it's more complicated than that but the reality is if we just have mm -hmm. two categories then we are going to have to draw a line and that means there will always be some who are just on the wrong side of the line and who get restricted and it will always seem unfair to them Wherever you draw the line, there will always right. be someone who just misses out and it'll always seem bullshit and unfair. An example with where the line is drawn today of someone who I personally think is totally bullshit to exclude them is Casta Semenya, who is a cis woman who has been excluded because whoever is in charge of deciding the 800 meter sprint has drawn a line and she is on the wrong side of it. And um, the we might argue about how there's loads of different factors in where they draw the line and how race seems to be one of the factors in it and suddenly it's it's uh more than just a sporting issue but in a theoretical irrational prejudice free world we would have to still draw a line and someone would still miss out and also someone would just get in like maybe you say oh we're going to count all the chromosomes in your heart entire body unless you have one million Y chromosomes, then you're banned. And if you have nine, 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 then you're allowed in. And someone has nine, 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 and then they're allowed in. And then maybe they have a slight unfair performance advantage against the person who has nine, 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 eight. And the reality is, mm -hmm. the other thing we have to accept when we're drawing these lines is sport is inherently unfair. Like we can try and create a fair playing field, but firstly, I mean, the, all the people who are good at sports have like physical abnormalities in the sense that you know the classic example is michael phelps who's a really good swimmer he just has fucking long arms mm -hmm. and it's it's unfair <laughs> he wins at sport i mean yeah. he is he is probably one of the hardest working swimmers of all time and you know he's obviously yeah. well off enough to do this and all of these other kind of things for sure but he is also just abnormal and that is why he wins and yeah. That is always going to be selected for whatever. Whenever you create a set of rules and draw these lines, mm -hmm. it will select for the people who are right on the edge of these lines. So in that sense, we've got to kind of accept that that is going to be arbitrary too. But the, re the reason kind of why I'm saying all this is because if we actually manage to draw, if we actually manage to get transphobia out of the conversation, if we eradicated transphobia from society and eradicated intersex phobia from society, we could theoretically draw lines and all agree on some, we have to draw them somewhere and we can constantly argue about where they should be and maybe we can move them every year and all this kind of stuff. But the reality is that likely some trans women will be banned from top level sports. And I personally yeah. think that this then now becomes the other way round where I think at these low level sports, excluding trans women from you know, doing some kind of blanket ban or large ban of banning trans women from playing like ice hockey or something, that's just bullshit. It's just going to contribute to transphobia in, in society and make them feel like second class citizens. But at the top level, if you're like, OK, look, we've got this rule where maybe it's something like you have to be on hormones for five years or something, or maybe it's even like you Ooh. have to have transitioned before the age of 14 or, or some, you know, however restrictive it was, whatever yeah. line you yeah. draw, Drew, yeah. if it's mm -hmm. not a blanket ban, and we've got some mm -hmm. scientific reason to do it, and it is set per sport and per division and all of this kind of stuff, then right. I would say that the whole point in sport is trying to create some kind of perceived fairness, which is you know inherently going to be some kind of unfair. But it's, it's an impossible task. We just have to exclude some people. That is just the reality of it. And as long as it's something where we've had a, 
of rational discussion about it, then some people will be excluded. Mm -hmm. And I just think that's that's just an inevitable reality of sport. The other option, and, and this isn't just kind of like slippery slope, throwing my hands up, like the other option is we don't draw some line and then that doesn't really work because yeah. like the whole point is that we have two yeah. uh, modes on a, you know, an, um, it's a bimodal distribution of people's sexual characteristics and sex characteristics. Some of them do contribute to sporting performance. So that's that, that's the reality. We have to draw a line or we don't draw a line and then it's just a mess. Um, yeah. But so so to our, to just come back and to just bring you back into the conversation, what I would say is mm -hmm. you can, if you support trans rights in general and you accept that <clears throat> trans people's rights or any people's rights, not just trans people, any people's rights are more important than like local level fairness in sports, but also that um, top level sports is kind of a different realm of sports and stuff i think that, you can that, that is one point least... i'm wondering like why why would you be cherry picking uh top level sports you know if you take if we are talking about uh you know being supportive of trans rights which yeah. i am right uh just like anyone else here on the show uh i'm thinking why should we then single out you know this top level sports and say oh i can understand if they do it at the olympics but then at school level uh, maybe not, right? It it should because, be. Uh, I think it should it should be uniform, uh, uniform or well, yeah, but uniform. The thing is, there there are yeah. four different reasons. Like when you play in local level yeah. sports, when you do PE at school, you're not trying to be the best mm -hmm. in the world. You're not competing with the best, and you're literally just doing something you find fun and trying yeah. to have a good time with the people who are about your ability level. Um, mm -hmm. And like the what? So there are many factors in sports, right? Uh, biological structure is definitely one of them. Physical performance and fitness are, are things yes. that absolutely are sporting factors. But one of the biggest factors in high level performance of sport is income or wealth. Like how rich you are makes such a big difference because if you don't have to have a job because sure. you're independently wealthy or because you've inherited loads of money, then you can spend all your time getting better at the sport. Whereas if you're poor and you have to work, you know, three jobs, you can't. Um, so that's the one big factor. And another yeah. factor in sporting performance and also the performance in games is misogyny and other irrational prejudices like racism can be a factor too. Um, oh, yeah. And so of <laughs> one of the reasons, one of the reasons for women's sports, like we can say, oh yeah, you know, in, in the UK, softball is not very big and most of it is mixed sex competition. But the reality is that misogyny will still be a factor in society because it is still a factor in society in every country including the uk um so that might mean if you don't have a dedicated women's league there will be some women who are maybe too intimidated because they've had a bad experience in the past or maybe your particular local league will be run by some guy who's a dickhead who's you know a chauvinist misogynist or whatever and so some women will be put off whereas if we had a specific women's league then they would be encouraged to be around people like them and who are more supportive and that kind of stuff who, you know, there's a less misogynistic environment. And this kind of thing is what we have to consider for these like lower level sports things, that this is providing a community for people. It's providing, uh, you know, a hobby, an outlet, a way of becoming fit, which is a huge deal as well. And, you know, mm -hmm. trans women are going to be, they would benefit from the same things and they're facing the same societal f forces um so that's why like local level clubs and stuff i think it it's ridiculous to um it's to make big sweeping bands and that kind of thing um yeah whereas at a top level you're not doing it for any of that you're not doing it for society you're not doing it for socializing you're not doing it to keep fit like you're literally doing it to prove that you are the best in the world at this arbitrary set of rules we've invented uh and mm -hmm. if that's the case then make an arbitrary sets of rules. I mean, that's, all games are arbitrary sets of rules. That's like the whole point in them, isn't it? They, yeah, we yeah. just make up a set of rules and all agree they're important. So mm -hmm. if we're like, well, the reality is, uh, you know, say we eradicate transphobia from the world and suddenly trans people are able to, to even do sports at a local level enough to get good at them. And we actually start getting trans entrance into the Olympics. 
you know, we might fight and trans people weren't massively uh, poorer on average than cis people, then we might find that trans women outperform at sports. And then we can ask the question, does that matter? <laughs> and the reality is, right. it doesn't really matter. Like, if, if, trans, if trans women won every sport, mm. like, there will be some people who really hate that. But the reality is, if you then ban trans, if we move this arbitrary line, if we just move it a little bit across, and we exclude a bigger percentage of trans people and more cis people stop winning. Or even if we were to draw the line in a way that excluded all trans people, all the people right up against the edge of the line, they would also all be different. Like they would be abnormal in the way that you could describe trans women as abnormal or intersex women as abnormal as in they are not right in the center of the bimodal distribution of sex characteristics. They will be people who are just right up against the edge of the line again. And maybe the fact that someone is trans or not is actually an issue to some people. But if it wasn't, well, we could move this slider up and down and you're still going to end up with basically all the freaks of nature <laughs> winning the sport. That is, that's yeah. what's going to happen. Um, so yeah. I, I agree. I, I know what you're saying, that it would be good if it was uniform. But I just feel like that's one of those things where... I'm not really accusing you of this, Nate. I just think in general, this is a little bit like, it would be nicer if the rules were simpler. But I just, I think we just have to agree that, I just think we just have to accept that it's more complicated than that. And that the reason, yeah. the reason that I, I care about low level sports is because I want people to be fit and happy. And the reason I care about high level sports yeah. is because I really like javelin I don't, I don't know i don't know why people like high level <laughs> sports but you know you know you know what i'm saying <laughs> do, do yeah, you what do you think yeah. that i i yeah so uh, and awesome by the way i like the way you are explaining and the patience you have um the, the one thing though is you know when i as you were speaking uh the thought emerged in my head in that and what resonated with me is uh, the fact that um, yeah, really speaking, sports is not as important as some of the other bigger issues in life, and right? we've got bigger issues. Um, and so, even if, let's say, someone like me, uh, I I don't entirely fully agree with it. I see a, a let's say a trans woman winning a race. I think I think it's it might make sense for me to in in a sense, bite the bullet on that and turn the other way for a quick second, right? Because that's not really important. It's, it's, it's a trivial matter, right? And so I think I should have the, my mind should have the liberty to let it pass, uh, I'm thinking, right? Because you cannot just um, take every single thing and weigh it for what it is and critically evaluate every single thing to that detail. Right. Uh, we won't get anywhere. I think that you're right in that sense, right? We are not important issues. Absolutely, I'm on your side there. Yeah. Um, no. and so, think, yeah, and that that's a nice way of putting it, Katie. I really like that. Yeah. So you're I know. Something? I wouldn't want to. Yeah, that's okay. I I wouldn't want to say sports meaningless. Just get over it. You know, like if there's someone who. <clears> yeah, yeah. We could also yeah. say the same for like drug testing. Someone could be like. I yeah. think this person has cheated a sport. We should spend money on drug testing them. And they could be like, you want to waste your time drug testing me? We're on the verge of World War III. Like, that's a rubbish mm -hmm. argument. But the reality is that the the conversation about trans people in sports has become like, I don't know, a top 10 issue in the English speaking world. And it's like, it's just ridiculous. Yeah. <laughs> like, th there was, yeah, yeah. there were. orders of magnitude more important things. And, and, you know, we can still have this mm -hmm. conversation about but sport, but maybe people within their yeah. sports and not all of these fucking losers who comment on the Daily Mail. I just, I just want to add one more yeah. thing before I let you go, because we'll have to move on in a sec. But just one more thing to add, because mm -hmm. you kind of mentioned how you... You're kind of talking, honestly, I think, about your feelings versus like your rational position. I guess one thing to just consider in your feelings is, say there's some kind of middle-of-the-road level of important sporting event, like there's, I don't know, the... Brighton Marathon or something, you know, like some kind of, it's not, it's not a local sports club, but it's not like the Olympics. It's like halfway between the two. And a trans woman right. wins that. If you just see on the news, trans woman wins Brighton Marathon, you might be like, where the hell is Brighton? Mm -hmm. If you don't, if you're not from the UK, it's just, but it's still like a marathon. Mm -hmm. So it's a big deal. Maybe your reaction would be like, 
Okay, well, exactly. Boston Marathon. I mean, I think Boston Marathon's maybe a little bit bigger. But anyway, yeah. you know, some no, maybe like a second a tier. Martin, Sorry, yeah, go ahead. Oh, oh, okay, <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah. So, um, if if that kind of thing, I think a lot of people might be like, "Well, I support trans rights," but my gut reaction is that's kind of unfair. I would just like to challenge this kind of gut reaction and say, when you just hear trans women wins race, if your first thought is, "Ah, oh, she must have an unfair advantage." Like, do, do you know when she transitioned, or how old That's she is, point. or what category mm. she was in? Because you know, potentially, this is the like, uh, sporting the full field, and she transitioned yesterday, and she finished like yep. half an hour before the next women, like. You know, that's what people mm -hmm. often jump to the conclusion and think. <laughs> or maybe yeah, she yeah. transitioned when mm -hmm. she was four and never went through male, yeah. male puberty. And this is like the under 18s category and she's 17 years old and she beat second place by three mm -hmm. seconds. Like when you see the headline, I mean, both of those are ridiculous exaggerations and neither of them are going to be the case. But when you see the headline, it, it could be anywhere in between that. And I think my first reaction when I see these, well, my first reaction is here comes the wall of transphobia. But, you know, the, the reaction to the news about the sporting event is with some kind of interest or I wonder when she transitioned. I wonder, uh, you know, what, what age category she's in and, and stuff. Because yeah. that, is, that is something to consider. And the bottom line is yeah. blanket bans of trans women is always going to be unfair because there are some trans women yes. who transition before male puberty yeah. and so do not have the advantages mm -hmm. male puberty confers. So, but anyway, yeah, yeah. No, Nate, I think we've true. had a good discussion. That's mm -hmm. all right, go for it. Do, yeah, your, do your closing uh, line. Quick point. <laughs> yeah, no, so yeah. sure. So, uh, the, in fact, the one of the swimming associations, I don't know if it is uh, the one at the uh, federal, the state, uh, the, in the United States level, or is it the one in California? Uh, we can look it up. Uh, what they've done is they have actually had a ruling for trans women, right? If you if you have transitioned before the age of twelve, I think that's where they draw the line. Uh, I think it, yeah. it it should be okay. And then even after the age of twelve, right? Uh, they I think they have some reservations about it. So that kind of aligns with uh, your thought process on the age and kind of thing, right? Anyways, sure. But, yeah, um, I think yeah. Sorry. Yeah, and then we can argue about whether that's a fair age or not. But yeah, anyway, call in yeah, another time, yeah, Nate. We've no, had that, a good that, discussion, that, and uh, yeah. do some thinking, mm -hmm. and we'll we'll talk again in the future. But yeah, thank you very much. Absolutely. And yeah. See you later. Oh, sorry, cut you off early. Well, thanks anyway, Nate. Um, I think that before we quickly rattle on to the next conversation, that was quite a long call, but I think it was quite a good call, and I hope you've got my opinion on that now, and you've. Uh, clipped out of context one bit in the middle where I said I don't care and then pasted that on Twitter for all of the transphobes to have a go. While that happens, why don't we discuss how this isn't the only show on this channel and we've got a whole week's worth of stuff lined up. Uh, on This is like the the, tra the 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 line week kind of finishes. This is the like Friday of the week, if no, it's Thursday. Doesn't really make any sense. Ignore what I'm saying. Basically what I'm saying is we are back on Sunday with the Sunday show uh, and we are we have Jimmy and Eric, and then on Monday we have Forrest and Hazel uh, with Skep Talk, and then on Tuesday we have Dying Out Loud with Dave Warnock and Eve Was Framed. On the Wednesday we have The Hang Up with Matt and Jimmy, uh, and then next Thursday, currently we've just got my name down, hopefully Arden will be better, we'll see. But this is a good channel if you like skeptical stuff, discussions, call-in shows, maybe if you like Jimmy and Matt shouting at idiots, this is the show, this is the the channel you should subscribe to. Um, and you can also support us as a channel, not just by subscribing, but by going to our Patreon, patreon.com forward slash call the line, and you could support us there. We have like hangouts for all of the um, people on the shows, like monthly, I think it is. I don't know when the next one for this show is, but there's some cool stuff on there. I think there's a Discord. We would support. Uh, we would um, love it very much if you would support us that way. But let's move on to the next caller, who has been waiting already for one hour. We're going to talk to Connor in Florida. Connor, thanks for waiting. Um, you are on the line, and I think you would like to talk about internalized transphobia. Connor, go for it. Yes. Hi. Um, 
I just wanted to say huge fan, Katie. Love you on all the different talk shows that you've been on. Um, <laughs> my uh, sister is a trans woman, and I'm tr- I, I love her, and I don't feel any ill will, but I still have this sense of weirdness slash ickiness about it. Um, I just was hoping maybe you had any advice on how to better, well, combat uh, internalized transphobia. Right, sure. Um, thanks for being very honest with yourself and uh, and with us all in the call. It's probably a difficult thing to talk about. I guess one question I'd want to ask, though you don't have to answer if you're worried like it would give away who you are and or whatever, but... Um, how do you know how long you've known that she's trans or how long ago did she come out to you? Cause it's different if you're talking about like 20 years versus like six months, what advice I'd give. Oh, basically. um, yeah, about less than a year. Um, she was always, a she, uh, used to identify as like, a uh, what, what did she call herself? Like a, a, a feminine man. Um, she, she years have gone by where my mom said she suspected that she was trans for a while. Um, and looking back, I can see that she was very, you know, she always wanted to be referred to as pretty, not handsome and stuff like that. But she only came out. Um, I think I found out about seven months ago, my non-binary binary boyfriend, uh, found out, quite quite a bit earlier and uh didn't tell me which i'm i'm glad he didn't because obviously i don't want to you know condone outing people when they're not ready right but um yeah it's 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 been relatively recent okay yeah so i guess um <clears throat> that that that's a good thing in the fact that i think if i was feeling that about my sibling or a, like a loved one or a family member maybe I would be feeling guilty or like, I'm not pro- trying to project this onto you and saying it's bad or good. If you feel these things that maybe I was feeling these, you know, feelings of yuck or whatever. But one of the things that I would respond to that straight away is seven months isn't actually a long time in the grand scheme of things. Like obviously she's had her whole, give me one second. Okay, right. I'll just I'll come in with a different angle because it was going to be time related, and and instead I'll try a different thing. Um, one of the oh, I know where I was going to go. Right. Okay. So I I was recently been reading one of Julia Serrano's books, and she is talking about or was kind of theorizing or hypothesizing, I guess is the right word, for how people's brains store like information about other people, and how when you change sex or gender in someone's mind it's not really like for for a lot of people it's not really like they have this person in their mind with a whole bunch of attributes and then you just change a tribute like if you know if you meet someone and they change hair color you're like oh that is still my friend and she's just got a different hair color now it's like you have a place in your brain for someone and they have a bunch of attributes but when they change from a man to a woman or a woman to a man or to non-binary or into another group, suddenly that isn't just like your brain saying, oh, they have simply changed sex, that is all. Quite a lot of the time, it almost seems like they have become a new person in the way that they're stored in your mind. And I think you see this in a lot of ways, like with some people, um, particularly you see parents talking about this, almost feels like grief. It feels like the person has died and they have like a new person in their life. And sometimes, um, like in Julia Serrano uh, is talking about how some people who she's known for years, who hadn't seen her since like she came out and started uh, passing, suddenly had no idea who she was, even though she didn't really look that different. Um, and then all of a sudden, when they recognized it was her, we're kind of like, what the hell is going on? And it's like your brain has to kind of learn this... Um, way of viewing someone transitioning as rather than like two separate different people like men and women are just different categories in your brain that is just like it's the same person and they've changed hair color when i was 
coming out to um, my friends and family, one of the things I went really out of the way to do was to explain to them how I'm still the same person and, you know, nothing has changed. And it did take a long time for that to go through for some people. Um, because it is a different way of looking at things and it, your brain just takes a while to rewire because, I mean, I don't know about your upbringing, but for a lot of people, you just grow up seeing the world as a binary. There are men and there are women and that's it. And that's, that's all there can be. And people don't change from one category to another. And so when you're first confronted with this, it's like, my brain doesn't know what to do with it. And sometimes that's expressed in like grief, but also it could be expressed in kind of disgust because it's like this person in one box is doing the wrong thing for like the people in this box they're, they're doing the things for the people in this other box you know they're wearing the wrong clothes they're, they're presenting themselves in the wrong way and in some people that manifests in disgust i think it's probably quite a common human reaction um i guess that i would say with anything like this um at all sometimes you you have a gut reaction and you realize that it's negative a bad reaction and then but rationally you know it isn't like i i also had the same thing like when i was first coming out to myself i was disgusted by trans people uh, i thought that it was horrible and that was one of the reasons that i never came out was because i always thought trans people are disgusting and bad and i cannot be because i'm not disgusting and bad so i'm not a trans person but then when I realized rationally that that was a, a bad position to have, I didn't suddenly change emotions. Like I wasn't suddenly like, oh, trans people are no longer disgusting to me. I'm no longer transphobic. I am cured. I was still feeling those things for, you know, quite a long time. Um, but every single time it happened, I just re-rationalized it in my brain. If I see a trans person and my reaction was like, oh, trans people are weirdos. I'm like, that is irrational that is a stupid position that i couldn't justify and it's a bit like you know being afraid of something and having a phobia i mean that's that's why we say transphobia it's an irrational position and once you kind of rationalize that to yourself every single time a little your emotions just follow along i find this with you know lots of things um that i've been irrational about in the past and have just constantly re-rationalized in my mind and I've got to the point where my emotions kind of follow my rational brain. And I think that's just kind of how human brains tend to work. So that would be um, another piece of advice that I have um, to, you know, dealing with the the initial feelings. Um, when you say, so I guess just a question, when you say, I didn't actually know if you said disgust, but when you say like feelings sort of negative about it, what if you could be super honest about it what is it what is the like aspect that you focus on like is it appearance or is it the the change or you know what what kind of thing is is most affecting you um i guess i would say i'm just if i had to be honest um as a male identifying um or rather as a male who identifies as a man um, I don't, I, I guess I just don't really understand the draw, like the, it, it's hard, it's hard to right. explain. Sorry. I'm, I'm, I'm autistic. Um, I, I, That's okay. I, I, I'm, I'm not really sure. I guess it's the, I think you're right. I think you hit it on the head when you said it, it's a, it's like, she's living in a box that I created all my life. And then now she's doing something that is outside of the box sure. that I put her in. And it's hard to kind of open that box up and just let people be people. Yeah. And I think that you shouldn't necessarily beat yourself up for that because, you know, society indoctrinates people into believing that everyone should be in a box and it, it takes a while to get rid of the sort of conditioning. Um, I maybe kind of picked up from you there saying that you couldn't really empathize with it. Do you think that that's also a factor in it? Because I do have a, a suggestion for that too. Yes, I, I do think that's the case. Um, I, okay. I get, I like, I get confused with my boyfriend being non-binary as well, because I don't really understand the concept. Um, I'm a right. very black and white thinker and you know, that has its downsides. So, 
So, like, to some people, they might say, "Oh, I don't, I don't get why do you want to be a trans woman? I don't get why you want to be non-binary. I don't, I don't get this. I don't get that." And like, I could try and explain it from my po position, but maybe still won't get it. But I could also say, you know, I don't like. We've had this before. Someone calls in and they say, "I don't get non-binary people," and but I don't get non-binary non-binary people. Yeah, I don't get non-binary people either. But I also don't get trans men, and I also don't get cis men because. Why the hell would you want to be a man? Like, if, if you just have an option, like, obviously, I'd pick women. And the only way that I can get any of these things is to try and remember that, you know, if I was given the option, I'd pick this. And maybe you could also consider this yourself. If you, I mean, perhaps, yeah, I, w I won't go for a, for a horrible view. If, if, like, an alien just turned up, or a, a wizard, or, like, God, or some kind of magic or something, Turn up, and they're like, Connor, right. I can magically right now change it so you are a woman and you had always been a woman and everyone sees you as a woman, or I can keep you as a man you are now, or I could turn you into a non-binary person with any combination of sex characteristics you want at all. Like, you, I presume you would just pick to be how you are now. I mean, this is a final decision. You cannot go back on it. And I think most cis people would, well, they might be like, oh, it'd be interesting to see what it's like, you know, on the other side. But at the same time, I don't actually want to be a man. I don't actually want to be a woman. I, I just want to kind of be who I am. Whereas trans people would be like, well, obviously I'd choose the other one. But then if you think, if you then kind of take this thought experiment a step further, like if this super alien space wizard turns up and they're like, Connor, I can turn you into a woman or a man. And you're like, no, I want to be a man. And then it's like, great. I heard the word woman magically turns you into a woman and disappears off into the where it came from. Like, how would you respond to that? I mean, I think a lot of people would be like, at the start, they would kind of be like, oh, this is different, I guess. Um, but then if you kind of think like this is for the rest of your life, this is your new body, this is how people perceive you, this is what you've got to deal with. I think a lot of people would kind of to some extent go out of their way to try and either change back or signal that they want to change back some people would just be like fuck it i'll just get on with it especially if you live in places where it's really oppressive for trans people but if you had actually been changed into a woman's body and perceived as a woman etc would you really just be chill with that or would that at least make you uncomfortable and in that case the third part of the thought experiment is if this, if after like six months or a year, this alien space wizard turns back up and they're like, oh, Connor, I'm so sorry. I've, I've just realized I misheard and I accidentally changed you into a woman when you said you wanted to be a man. Do you want me to change you back? Then I think most cis people will be like, of course, please, finally. But I guess that feeling of like, oh, finally, yes, thank you. Please undo your mistake. Take me back to where I was. That is just the feeling that trans people have without ever having been there in the first place. So like if this I used to think this all the time when before I came out, um just my brain would conjure up all these ridiculous scenarios or a dream about it or something, like there's some situation where we discover aliens or oh there's a wizard or oh God is real and I'm given this option. It's just like, yes, finally, thank you. You've saved me. Like Thank you for giving me the option to just turn into a woman. Absolutely, yes, please, I'll take that straight away. Um, so maybe, I don't know, what do you think to that thought experiment? I know it's maybe a lot to take on board, but do you think you would have that, finally, thank you, take me back to being a man, <laughs> who I should be, kind of feeling? Um, definitely, I actually have a bit of a, a phobia about specifically... Uh, uh, not not to be crass, but um, the, the female genitalia. I'm you know I'm gay, but I also have a yeah. weird. It's weird. Um, so yeah, I I would definitely right. be, be like, oh my god, like. Yeah. yeah, and and I think that the reality is that most well, I mean, the reality is in my experience, but also the reality is in the the evidence we have shows that people do care about this stuff. It's just the, the only real difference between us is that 
I have had to, and your sister has had to face this head on like our whole lives because we've constantly had this feeling of like, oh, this is just, please just, you know, magic alien space wizard, take me back. Whereas you <laughs> haven't had to confront it. And that's fine. That's good for you. I'm not saying you're bad for not having to confront it. Like it would be great if no one had to confront it because it's kind of bullshit. But as an attempt to empathize with it, try and imagine what would happen and what lengths you would go to to undo this. Like, you know, you don't have to say this out loud now, especially if you find it uncomfortable or whatever. But if you did get magic into having a vagina and you, you, you know, you don't like this, it sounds like you don't like the sound of that. What lengths would you go to in order to change that? And I mean, it's, it can sound quite extreme if you describe it. And then this is another thing which can kind of cause people's uh, cis people like disgust or horror. Um, it's talking about genital surgery. And, you know, if you describe it in the way that transphobes do, it sounds fucking horrifying, like slicing open parts of your body and tearing your genitals apart and recreating it. Like, it's pretty mad. <laughs> but all, all surgery is all surgery is absolutely disgusting. And uh, surgeons are mental. I've no idea how anyone's a surgeon. But, you know, they it, that's one way of looking at it. But also, if you just like, it's just a surgery. And basically, you're saying, well, I've got this body part and I'd like to change it for a different one. <laughs> I mean, it, it it's it's so scary. Like the decision for me was very scary because obviously there's always a chance surgery can go wrong and there's always a, a chance that potentially I could regret it or whatever. But the reality is that had things n not gone wrong, that is what I wanted to do because of course I would rather the other genitals or, you know, I, that is... To me, it was a quite a straightforward decision. And if there was no risk of dying and there was no risk of, um, you know, the other possible complications from genital surgery and it was free, I would have done it like, of course I would have done it. And, and when you, when you come to looking at transition op options, you know, your sister might be looking at various transition options. You, you think about the hypothetical, like, would I do this if there was no risk? Would I do this if it was free? And that's kind of how you can think about it as well. Like, would you want to change back if you could, you know, if you'd been magically transformed into a woman? And then the next step is considering the realities of it and being like, it isn't free. It isn't risk free. It, you know, it is, it does have all these complications. And then you then have to weigh up the pros and cons there. But I think as far as empathizing, you've only really got to just, Consider the hypotheticals, really. Um, unfortunately, you won't ever have to be in a position where you need to genuinely consider the risks of genital surgery. <laughs> yeah. But, um, yeah, I, d I don't know if that helps or that's just horrified you or... <laughs> oh, no, that was very helpful. The, the box analogy as well as the magic man in the sky uh, analogy, mm. I, I, I really, uh, that really helps shape the outlook. Also, I guess the last thing I'd say um, that I can think of <laughs> is <clears throat> if you don't get trans women, presumably, I mean, you get cis women in the fact that they're cis and they don't change their bodies. So there's no like body horror stuff to worry about. But also they're still, you know, they're still women. And that's something you wouldn't necessarily choose for yourself. And that's that's like fine, though. I mean, obviously you've grown up surrounded by women and you know, half the people, you know, are women and all this kind of stuff. And hopefully I assume that you're not a misogynist, so that's just fine, but you don't really question the fact they're women all the time. And when people transition, the problem is, is it causes you to question that it causes you to think all these things like, do I want to be a woman? No, that's horrible. Do I want women's genitals? No, that's horrible. Is this person even the same person? Like, you think all this stuff because the existence of trans people at all gets you asking these questions because it's different to what you're used to. And I, you know, when I first started coming out to myself, I was asking all these questions too, but now I've done it all and it's kind of boring. And I see a trans person and, you know, sometimes I see trans people who have assimilated into cishet society, but there are also trans people who like make a real point of standing out and you know, not fitting into cishet society. And I don't 
I don't think anything of that. It's it's not. It doesn't cause me to ask questions anymore because I've I've done all those questions. Um, I guess to just remember that, like you don't have to know. You don't have to get it. You don't have to anything. Or uh, you know, if she's your sister, then you. I mean, you don't even really have to like her. You just <laughs> no. You just gotta be the same way you would be about a cis member of your family. In that, if you're not asking all these confusing gender questions, it's worth asking them. I do think it's worth asking them because then you can fight for your irrational prejudices and you know maybe become a better, more understanding person. But at the same time, like if you spend a load of time thinking about it and you're like, you know what, I would transition back to a man if I got magically transitioned, but I don't really get it. At that's also just kind of fine. Like, all you've really got to be is a loving brother, and that's okay. I don't know. Yeah. What do you think to that? <laughs> yeah, I, I think you're right. Yeah, I mean that that makes a lot of sense. Um, yeah. So I guess one, but one... I do like her. Yeah. Well, what sister isn't annoying? I, I make to be sure to be as annoying yeah, I as I can to my brother sometimes. So. <laughs> <laughs> um. But yeah, and and I, I know I said one last thing already, but another last, a second last thing is uh, there's always exposure therapy. What you should do is you should download all the films of trans people in. You should listen to all the music written by trans people. Go absolutely overboard so you're sick of it, and then you'll be like, I don't care anymore. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I do need to watch Tack. Uh, what do you call this one? Tackus? Takus? The Trans Transatlantic Trans Show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, go, go um, and watch all of the the things on this show go and watch my own youtube channel and then you'll be like oh, i am sick of trans people i do not give a fuck and then you can just <laughs> get on with your life <laughs> all right yeah. well thank you anyway, so much um if i could say okay. one last thank thing you, Colin. do it um yeah uh fuck you jimmy all right love <laughs> you guys thank you so much thanks connor bye i'm confused because oh, the term good, of endearment dude. is jimmy go fuck yourself Fuck you, Jimmy. <laughs> can go either way. Yeah, we'll we'll assume that was uh, aggressive. No, we'll assume that was loving. We'll assume it's loving. We all love to say "go fuck yourself, Jimmy" on this show. Um, so we have time. Oh, there've been some longer calls today, but we've had some good discussions. We've got time at least for one more caller. I am sad because uh, Vibe have uh, who is a caller who's called in a few times called in, and when he just dropped at the end of that one. Um, I'd love to talk to you again, Vipab. Call in maybe next week. Uh, sorry we didn't get to you sooner, but we are now going to talk to uh, John in California who wants to talk about sex binaries and spectrums. John, what would you yes, like to hello. say? Hi. Um, so, first of all, um, I am unsure where I stand. Um, I am a progressive and I fully buy into or did buy into the, Hey, um, you know, sex is a spectrum and it's, it's incorrect to say sex is a binary. And I recently had a discussion with my wife and she feels fairly adamantly that it is a binary. Um, and when we argued for hours, it basically <laughs> boiled down to a difference of definition. And when I say sex, I sort of meant identity is it's the spectrum. It's whatever it means for you because it's an expression of your own um, reality, your own lived experience. And when she was saying it, um, she meant it as a biological fact of reality um, as <laughs> When we drilled down even further, what she meant really was either penis haver or vagina haver. Um, right. And can I tell her that that definition is wrong? I don't. I don't think so. You know. So I was kind of wondering, like, your opinion on that. Sure. Yes, yeah, it's, it's a good question. Um, so often in these discussions, people say sex, and they also say gender. And you will hear some people saying sex and gender are different things. Um, and maybe that kind of gets towards the difference between the position you're arguing and the position your wife are arguing. But I usually avoid the word gender because 
gender has a lot of different meanings and it can get very confusing. <clears throat> but what is worth, I guess, acknowledging is generally when people say sex, they either mean as a sim synonym for gender, sex and gender, all the kind of same things. Oh, you're a man, are oh, you a woman? That's all I kind of care about, you know. It's like you'd say, which sex toilets are you going to? You're not really asking about someone's biological makeup. It's just like which box are you in, basically, is what some people mean. And the other meaning for the term is when you, uh, usually, when you're in the trans rights argument discussion, or if you're a biologist or or something like that, you might be talking about biology and people's physical makeup of their body and. Generally, if someone said sex is binary, I think they're invoking a biology discussion. Um, but the reason that I kind of bring this up is your comment about, you know, it's an expression of identity and all this kind of stuff. The reality is we can have all of these definition arguments and all these kind of discussions and blah, blah, blah. Who counts as real women stuff? All this, all this kind of rubbish. But the reality is uh, when we come down to who is a woman and what is sex and all this kind of stuff, what really matters, in my opinion, is um, whether people are free and safe and able to live their lives without oppression and violence and things. And, you know, we can have some kind of discussion, and maybe I, I will come on to the biology side in a second. Maybe if we just said, oh, yeah, it's vagina ever and penis ever or whatever. The reality is when we have things like women's spaces, like women's toilets or, or rape shelters and this kind of stuff, you know, the range of different reasons. The reason we have these, well, there's a mix of reasons and some of it's like tradition, but the, the a good reason to have at least in some cases... Um, women's spaces or women's sports or this kind of stuff is to address misogynistic sexism in society and <clears throat> you know we can say oh well you're not a real woman unless you have a vagina or whatever but the reality is that you don't see someone's genitals hopefully most of the time in public um yet people will seem to know who to be misogynistic towards and the reality is that trans women are the victims of misogynistic sexism and sexual violence. So when we're coming up with legislation about who to protect, that is more important. Who is the people actually being targeted by the things we're trying to combat? That's more important than what biological makeup they have. And the reason, so that's kind of the preface for this, the biology part of this. <clears throat> so um, the reason, like we could come up with a, we could, argue about biology and let's just say we come up with a biological definition which does create a binary and does split people into two camps does that match up with who faces misogynistic sexism and if the answer is no then that definition of sex isn't useful for legislating who gets protections from misogynistic sexism so i think that's like an important point to make because often when people get Caught up in this discussion, it's all the same thing. It's like who I think philosophically counts as a woman, also who I'm attracted to, also who should have human rights, also who should be in sports, and also etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera, what medicine people should have. And suddenly you're creating this binary not just of biology, <clears throat> but also of society and all these other things, which just even more obviously aren't a binary. So that's that's like the first like premise, uh, first prelude to the next part that I would comment I would make, and I would I would say all of that stuff is way more important. If you if you're not a biology nerd, then the biology stuff doesn't matter at all. Like it, you don't know what genitals I have unless you've watched other episodes of this show, or maybe I said it earlier I can't remember. But you don't know what genitals I have. It's never going to matter to you. However, if I was banned from women's toilets, that would matter to me. It would make my life worse and more difficult. So who really cares about the biology? However, I also am a biology nerd and I'm more than happy to argue this with anyone. And I'll, I'll talk you through my position on this too, in case you're interested um, or in case your wife's interested and wants to hear my take too. The reality is you cannot give a, def a, a sensible definition of sex, which actually creates a binary. And I say sensible because we could come up with an arbitrary definition. We could say, 
everyone who is five foot five or shorter is a woman and everyone taller is a man. And that is technically a binary definition because it includes all humans, there are no exceptions, and you're in one of two boxes. However, it's clearly a nonsense definition because there are everyone in the world will agree there are women taller than five foot five and men shorter than five foot five. That's just a fact, it's a nonsense definition. So we're trying to come up with a sensible, and when I say sensible, I mean not obviously bullshit, sensible definition for sex being binary. So we could start with a thing like the most common one, which is where your wife is, is what genitals do you have? And there are, are a couple of problems with this, it, this, and one of them is that what genitals you have itself isn't actually a binary. Most people are either born with a penis or with a vagina, but not everyone. Some people are born with neither. Some people are born with something ambiguous somewhere in between and not just born with too. If we were to just define sex on what genitals you have, then a trans woman who used to have a penis and now has a vagina has changed sex in that definition. But also potentially, if you just said rather than, because the issue here is because we're trying to create a binary, we need something which isn't, it's a true negation. So we can't say, the definition of male is has a penis and the definition of female is has a vagina because if you have neither or both suddenly you don't have you don't fit into either of those two boxes and it isn't a binary anymore so you would have to say something like has a penis is male and doesn't have a penis is female but then suddenly if you have someone who's in an accident have they changed sex doesn't really make sense it's not a sensible definition so the reality is that genitals doesn't work as a binary. It doesn't split all people into one of two boxes. It's pretty good. It splits 99% of all people, or 98%, or some high percentage into one of two boxes. But then there's like 1% left. And a lot of people are like, oh, well, what's 1%? You know, it's not much. 1% doesn't sound like many people. But when there's 8 billion people yeah, on Earth, suddenly that's... Yeah, sure. So I... I mean, I'm, I'm not trying to be disrespectful at all. That's not my intention. Um, right, the okay, whole, right. um, it can't be a binary, um, I obviously agree with, because the only way to have a true binary is to have a thing or not a thing. If you have two different yeah. variables, there are four options. There's the thing, not a thing. I'm oh, sorry. There's either or, both or neither. And so yeah. those are four oh. options. Um, so I've, I'm fully on board with that. Um, however, I read, and I'm, I don't remember the name of it, but it was a, a paper of a person who was arguing for um, sex as a binary based on gametes, and they were right, very yeah. derisive to the other side. Um, and uh, I guess um, there's no real social utility, and this was your whole first point, to describing it that way, which I agree with. Um, mm. But when it comes to um, having a discussion with these types of things, I've noticed, because I've watched loads of uh, debates and discussions on this topic, when a person is taking the, you know, I'll just call it the reactionary side, what they tend yeah. to do is um, swap the definition they're using of sex depending on the point they want to make. So if they want oh, to make a point about... <laughs> Yeah. And my problem is um, how to challenge that specifically, because I've tried to call it out. I've tried to, you know, supply a working definition that we can both agree to. I've tried to, you know, um, equate what they're doing to other people using logical fallacies like flat earthers or whatever, and like draw the direct lines to the types of arguments they're making but nothing seems to get through. And at the end of the day, they will just reassert repeatedly the definition that they want to use for the given situation, regardless of what I say. And uh, I, I mostly watch the line for the um, uh, theology content. And yeah. it, it's, it's, it's the same thing. There's like, there's this oh, wall yeah. there. And I guess what sort of made me start to uh, question my own stance was sort of the, okay, if I can say that their adamant adherence to using their own definition is like a flat earther, how can I know 
that my position on the other side is not the equal opposite irrational uh, viewpoint of that. And I guess I don't have what I would call a strong grounding uh, outside of uh, social utility. Right, okay. So, um, yeah, I totally agree with you that uh, they will give changing definitions that are mutually exclusive back to back and just constantly assert them over and over again in the same way that a flat earther or a creationist will, like, 100%. I, I, the first thing I spent most of my time arguing about was uh, religion, like when I was a teenager, and then I moved on to arguing about gay rights and arguing about trans rights, and they're all the same. Like, the people who oppose them have the same rhetorical strategies, they get stuck in the same loopholes, they make the same patterns of argument. Yeah, totally agree. <clears throat> and it is very difficult to get through to them, and I guess... The, you know, you said, how do you get through to them? I guess the the point I would make first, um, sorry, I'm just going to click mute just because there's some background noise. I'll, I'll unmute you in a second. Um, the point I would get through to you, or the point I'd make first is, do you, is your goal here changing someone's mind? If you meet a creationist, and cre creationists have a lot of garbage views, is your goal in combat on Twitter to change the mind of a creationist and change them into an atheist. Because if that is your goal, it's kind of delusional and it is not going to happen. If your goal is to, uh, hang on, I'll just, this might be a bit when you're on interject, I don't know. But if your goal is to, you're unmuted. Um, if your goal okay, is you. to, uh, sorry, it's just because there's like some, I don't know, white noise kind of in the background. Um, if your goal is to combat misinformation for people passing by, then providing a good counter argument is kind of all you need to do. And if your idea, if your goal is to like plant a seed, then th these are all kind of like different objectives. And I guess, you know, if you're talking about idiots in comment sections, in my personal opinion, the best thing to do is to provide a strong counter argument and then that's it. You're not going to change their mind. However, if it's like your wife or someone close to you, then you kind of want to do the planting the seeds long term uh, discussion strategy because ultimately you want to win them over rather than to just prove them wrong and then walk away because it's not really, you know, it's not going to achieve anything and you might end up getting in a fight over it. Um, <clears throat> so, in, in terms of like, strategy to combat a random shithead commenter you know if if they say sex is binary then i mean that's just kind of a claim it's just like saying you know anyone anyone can make a claim you could say god is real and like technically as an atheist it's not impossible that god is real it's just I'm going to need a definition of what you think God is, and I'm going to need some kind of evidence. Otherwise, really, technically, I can dismiss this claim out of hand. But the thing is, when someone says sex is binary, you can just be like, haha, as a rational thinker, I can dismiss this claim out of hand. But no one gives a fuck, because the reason they're saying it isn't some claim in the marketplace of ideas. It's a propaganda point, and if you don't do anything about it, then they will win the propaganda. So... It, it, you need to challenge them and be like, well, give me a definition of sex, that's binary. Then they do, then you provide a counterexample, and then anyone passing by is like, well, th that was stupid. <laughs> that this, this clearly shows this definition is wrong. And if someone was genuinely curious, and they stumbled across enough of these conversations, they would see 50 different definitions from transphobic people, all of them with counterexamples, all of them mutually exclusive, and the seed would be planted, and they would eventually get to the point where they're making the conclusion themselves um but if you're talking to a loved one i guess this is why i focus on the it doesn't matter position I, if you want i have an article on my website katiemontgomery.com called something like sex isn't binary but it doesn't matter for trans rights if it was um and the reason i argue that is because arguing the like human side of it is more important for not just people's lives but also for winning people over like once lots of the time people are, will argue this sexist binary stuff when they've never met a trans person they don't love one because there's no one in their life 
And then once they get a trans person in their life, suddenly they have to reevaluate all this stuff because the things they're seeing in their life don't match up with their like preconception um, of trans people's lives. And then that, you know, that unravels this because people create this kind of worldview where they just know, they know for a fact that the world is flat and that sex is a binary and that God is real. And, and when you just know, you just know, you just know, there's n no amount of rationalizing gets you out of it. The only thing that's going to get you out of it is an irrational argument in the sense of emotions or, uh, you know, someone, a loved one in your life or, or some other kind of thing. And then maybe they're open to rationalization and then you can have the rational argument with them. But I cut, there was a last thing you said and I wanted to comment on it, but I've forgotten what it was. I, I don't know, where, how, what do you think to what I've said so far? There was another point you made, I can't remember it. Um, I, I like everything you're saying. Um, the last <laughs> thing I said was that I, I don't have a strong oh, grounding, yeah. philosophical yeah. or scientific grounding to support a narrative that, you know, sex is bimodal and the biological reality of it is different presentation of a collective characteristics, right? I have no sure. grounding that it, that that is an any more valid definition than penis or vagina haver. Because if <laughs> yeah, you talk yeah, about sure. like history and the way these terms were used, like, I guess, largely in the Western world of, um, you know, what is the sex of the child? There are two options, really. Well, four, once again, but two main options. Yeah. And if a, someone, like, doggedly sticks to that as their definition, um, what, under what grounds can I refute that? Sure. Yeah, absolutely. So... Um, I guess it's again much easier to argue from the like emotional side, and not just not just the social value, but also I think one of the, so this this two I'm going to present two different options of looking at this, and the, the easier one I think is looking at trans people's healthcare, and not trans healthcare, but like other healthcare. There is um, a um, oh what's the word sexual dimorphism in healthcare as well as you know things like characteristics there are some medicines which and some diseases which affect men and women in general in different ways and there is a number of reasons why so a good example of this where it's gone wrong is lots of the time they only test medicine on men and then they release it and then on women it has a different effect and i know there was one famous example where there was some I can't remember what medicine it was. Maybe it was a headache medicine or a hay fever or something. And they tested it on men and they put the dosing on the pack and then they released it. And then women took it and they were all crashing cars. And it turns out that it affected women and made them really drowsy. And the reason was, is just because of the average volume difference between men and women and the dosing was wrong. And it happened to be really specific based on volume and they had to do it based on your weight. And because there is a bimodal distribution between men and women, this, I mean, it would have been affecting shorter men, but also metabolism is a factor in this and men generally have a higher metabolism and suddenly there's a, a, a sexual um, dimorphism between this dosing. But that volume isn't the only thing that is sexually dimorphic. There are loads of things. Um, like and another, ex another clear example where suddenly trans and intersex people are relevant is, um, for example, breast cancer. Uh, you might think, like, natural response might be to think, oh, well, in an ideal world, anyone who is at risk of breast cancer would get screened all the time. But there is actually an optimal, optimal rate of breast cancer screening because, uh, and the same with any cancer screening, because there is a false diagnosis rate. And if you screen too often, then the false amount of false diagnoses you get is quite high and a false diagnosis of cancer is fucking grim like any diagnosis of cancer is grim but a false diagnosis of cancer is causing an issue that wasn't there and so like how often you screen people for cancer is actually important um you know you don't basically you don't want to overdo it and the reason i say that is men can get breast cancer and you often see people saying this in arguments cis men 
can get breast cancer. It is a thing. However, their rate is massively lower than in cis women. And when I say cis men and cis women here, obviously the reason I'm saying that is because generally cis women have breasts and therefore, and they have mammary tissue and therefore have a higher rate of breast cancer, whereas cis men don't have, or they have much less breast tissue um, and they have much lower rates of breast cancer because of it. But some women may have had their breasts removed for another reason. Um, and also when suddenly we're talking about like males or females, Trans women, regardless of whether you call them male or female, doesn't matter whether they've got a penis or a vagina, doesn't matter what their chromosomes are, doesn't matter what their volume is. If a trans woman has breasts which have developed through HRT, they turns out they basically turn out exactly the same as cis women's breasts, and then her rate of breast cancer is suddenly much higher. And so we can come up with an optimal breast cancer screening rate if there was unlimited money and healthcare was perfect. It would not be every single day, certainly not for men and so also not for women, but there would be an optimal rate. And maybe if we could screen men for breast cancer, we would want to screen them once every decade or something. And maybe for women, it would be once every year or something. But then when we get to trans people coming up with the ideal breast cancer screening rate, it actually doesn't matter who you think is a man or a woman or any of these other factors that we've said. All that actually matters is their breast makeup how you know whether they have breast tissue or not and that's going to be affected by whether they medically transitioned where they started whether they went through puberty or not all of these other things um and, and it gets more complicated and the reality is here just that one factor alone is not binary but medicine there's loads of different things some diseases only affect people with uh struck uh genetics generally found in the y chromosome but even then, some people who don't have a Y chromosome can have a translocated SRY gene or other genes from Y chromosomes, so then they can be faced with these chromosomal issues. Lots of conditions, a huge number of conditions related to hormones. So just looking at healthcare, uh, we can say that sex just isn't binary and it's important if you care about healthcare. However, the other, the other thing I wanted to say, and I know I'm going off a bit here, but I'll, I'll try and get this in. Um, but you could just say, I don't care about humans. I am an unthinking, rational machine and all of your social rubbish about human rights. I don't care. I just care what is true because I'm like Unicron or something from Transformers, like an unthinking, horrible machine that just wants to know the truth or whatever. All science is, and medical science is an application of this, but with the, the moral like, condition like the moral um premise behind medicine is it's science but also keeping people alive and healthy is good but if we just remove that premise we can do a science and the whole point of science is creating in our minds the best model of the world which matches reality as closely as possible like that's what science is we are doing experiments making hypotheses and testing them to try and create a model of the world which is as close to true as possible and we do that for a number of reasons. One, because it's just interesting, but one is we can make predictions with it. Like what shows good science, what shows your model is good, is that we can make a prediction with it. Like that's that's the whole point. Um, and some science is very good and you can make very good predictions. Like for example, electromagnetism, um, we've like absolutely fucking nailed that and you can make perfect predictions with the laws of electromagnetism that we've come up with. But other, other science is much harder to make predictions on, for example, social sciences, but even then just some other, like, um, some science is just not that well understood or is very difficult to predict. Genetics is very complicated. We don't know it that well. But when we come to understanding the sex of animals or plants or, or even just specifically humans, we can make a bunch of predictions. And you could just model sex as a binary you could say right sex is a binary and if you've got a penis then you're this and if you've got a vagina then you're this or even just a true binary penis or no penis right then you can make some predictions and i could predict quite accurately that if i find a penis on a human that it has y chromosomes like that is a prediction i can make my model of my binary model of the world i'm making that prediction and Turns out that like 99% of the time I'm right. So my model of the world is pretty good. But the reality is 
it can't make perfect predictions. And sometimes my model is wrong. So if we were truly this irrational, truth seeking, you know, uncaring machine, we'd be like, okay, well, our model is just wrong. I have just made a prediction with my model and it is false. So I'm going to make a new, better model. And the model I'm actually going to make is, oh, if I want to predict Y chromosomes, then maybe it'd be more correct to look at gonads. Or maybe it'd be more correct to look at hormone levels. And maybe it'd be more correct to look at a combination of those things. And then when we start kind of following this through and trying to create a model to make predictions about sex characteristics or sex itself or anything that comes from sex, the reality is when you keep digging into these models, you just do not get binary model. There is no perfect binary model that we can create, which will give you true predictions. Oh, it'll only ever give you 99% predictions at best. Um, and yeah. that's just the reality of it. If you, if you're, if you're someone who doesn't care about trans people's lives socially, and you don't care about medicine, if you still care about science, then still you're in this position. If you don't care about what's true as well, well then we're kind of stuck. <laughs> can I, I offer, I'm going to offer a small pushback. Um, you said there's yeah. no way to create a binary, um, but I, I did offer one kind of earlier on, and that's the, the gamete. So, so sex itself, like if you want to like dispense with all the different definitions, generally speaking, it's about the reproduction of the, of the species. And in the reproduction of the human species, there are two roles, right? There's the, the male and female gametes and then the bodies that carry them. And then eventually the social reproduction that like raises it to a full human. But in the, in the biological process of reproduction, there are two roles. And that, that really is a binary, um, unless you have a person who doesn't participate in the reproduction of the species, in which case they are or who doesn't not have gametes. really a part of the equation anymore, right? Um, yeah, but they're still a human, because, aren't they? And uh, well, yeah, you yeah, could say they yeah, don't I, have. I a never sex. want to question the humanity. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I, I mean, I wasn't sorry. I wasn't suggesting you weren't. But like this person, I mean, you could you could say right. You could say it's just gametes. And if you have sperm, you are male. And if you have over, then you're female. And if you don't have gametes, you don't have a sex. And I'm not interested. But then, like what most humans don't have a sex and it's kind of meaningless and what predictions can you make from that? I don't know. That's, that's kind of the point that I was, uh, yeah. Um, like yeah, we, I, I, I we can, that, but... <laughs> yeah. I mean, like we, we could, we could say it's, it's what gametes you currently have. Like that's something we can actually measure and then we can make a prediction. If you, if you've got sperm, then you've probably got testes, and then you've probably got a penis, and then you've probably got XY chromosomes. Like that, they're fair assumptions to make, but we can't make true predictions. We don't know for certain you have XY chromosomes if you've got sperm, because we have at least some examples of people who have XX chromosomes who have made sperm. Um, so, like we can, yeah, we can make some predictions based on that. Uh, but but then we end up in this situation again, where you know, like earlier, you said there's at least oh, there's at least four at least four states if you have if you're basing it on gametes that a person can have. Like we could say gametes themselves are binary, mm. but even if we just accept that premise, um, then humans have at least four states, don't they? So then we're back to that problem. Yeah, agreed. Um, I guess I have so, one yeah. last thought. Do it only because I'm enjoying the conversation. <laughs> but I should I should be getting rid of you because it's, it's gone on long. But uh, do it, do it. <laughs> Maybe I'll tell you. Yeah, to yeah, yeah. I am, yeah. Yeah, I uh, in my own personal philosophy, and this is you know not sex anymore. But it's um, I'm a gender abolitionist. I think that society um, would be better if the concept of gender was done away with and we were all just humans with varying body parts. <laughs> but how yeah. does that fit in with um, trans ideology and how can a gender abolitionist and a person who does absolutely want gender because they want affirmation of changing gender, uh, how can they work together in a meaningful way? Right, yeah, this is probably a, a conversation for next week, if you could call in, because this is a, a whole big topic, and I could easily talk for half an hour on this. 
I guess my TLDR is um, we exist in a gender society, whether we want to or not, and it has effect on people's lives. Like, you know, we, the classic is uh, it's a social construct, but it still affects people like money. Like you could say, I want to get rid of money, but if you say that, you'll just starve to death because money affects your life. Gender affects your life, and that causes people to do all kinds of things like, you know, feel feel happier if they fit into certain roles because it makes their life easier, et cetera, et cetera. That applies to trans and cis people. But the reality is people are not changing their genitals or taking hormones because they like some made-up gender role bullshit. There is another aspect to transition, and for this show and this call, I'm just going to have to say that and not justify it, but definitely call in next week, and I'm, I'd love to talk about this more. Um, there is uh, an aspect of transition, the bit that causes people to want to change their bodies, which is not related to gender roles at all. And the claim I'm making, that I will just consubstantiate next week, is um, even in a world where we had got rid of gender roles and expectations and all that kind of sexist bullshit, there would still be trans people. Maybe there'd be less trans people, maybe there'd be more trans people. But the reality is that people are still born with this kind of dysphoria. You could call it sex dysphoria or gender dysphoria. However we label it, this is why I stay away from the word gender because it gets confusing. But there are people who have a dysphoria about their sex characteristics and benefit from changing them regardless of what gender roles are placed on them. Um, but yeah, thanks for calling, John. Uh, I'm going to have to say bye now. But um, yeah, definitely call in next week with that one because it's a good, it's a good question. All right. Well, thank you very much for taking my call. That's all right. Cool. Bye. 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 Uh, but yeah, cool. Thanks, everyone. I think um, that is there was only three calls, but I, you know, I do a lot of talking. Apparently, when there's another host on, it's easier to uh, <laughs> it's easier to do less talking. Uh, probably because I feel guilty about talking to everyone all the time. Um, but that is not the end of the show. We are about to jump into Super Chats. If you'd like to talk about or comment on, not talk about, because I'm not going to talk for ages more. If you'd like to comment on any of the callers we've had today, then maybe you could Super Chat in a little thing about it right now, and I'll read them out in a sec. Um, it would be it'd be cool if I didn't lose when I was the only person here. So if we get some... Uh, we get some hashtag Katie's, then that'll be nice. But Jimmy, let me down easily. Did we get a single super chat this episode? Or oh yeah, yeah, we have we... We, we have a bunch of them. I have two notes. Okay. Uh, uh, okay. One, you uh, rant and tangent worse than me, and that's hard. Uh, <laughs> I am. I yeah. I think I am usually the person on this channel who it's like if you ask him one question. He'll go for 20 minutes before he turns it back over. And congrats. Well, I've done I think 30 you've, minutes there. I think you've beaten <laughs> me. Uh, and then two, it's worth noting just because I uh, know how to anticipate comments. Uh, gametes are literally not binary uh, uh, because gametes also don't exist as sperm or not sperm as the two choices. Uh, and there are, for example, people and organisms which have both. So they're even even gametes are not binary. Yeah, and just to add on to that point, if you, because I always think it's important whenever you talk about uh, anything to do with biology, is also consider where it came from in history. Unless you're proposing that two different gametes appeared out of evolution at exactly the same time. I mean, the most likely thing is that there was an exchange of DNA going on. Uh, it, basically, it, yeah, I don't know. Basically, think backwards in evolution, and it's hard to draw these lines of when sometimes things become two things. I don't actually know the path for evolution of gametes, so I'm not going to make any strong claims here. So uh, maybe backpedal a little bit on what I just said. But um, yeah, agree. Let's do super chats. <laughs> this is actually one of my favorite topics too, because uh, it's there. There are ways in which people cultures have tried to uh, force binary and gender by literally making concepts of the two genders are in fact men and not man. Uh, that's, mm. uh, uh, that's actually what a lot of uh, the basis of gender and a lot of really reductive societies have been in the past. And obviously that hasn't worked, but fine. We'll do super chats. 
when when you came, when Jimmy came in there and said this is one of my favorite topics, I hope everyone else also was like, is he saying one of his favorite topics is come? <laughs> Anyway, yes. let's do some super chats. <laughs> Twenty dollars from CD Lings. Hashtag Team Autumn. Get fucked, right? That's it. No more super chats. <laughs> what the hell? Come on, guys. Autumn's trash, but also thank you for your donation. <laughs> I said in the uh, chat. Let me get the scoreboard up here. I said in the chat from now on. Whenever somebody's like, "No, England's like a really lovely place," I'm just gonna respond. England, that place where autumn is somehow the worst season because <laughs> everywhere else i, I mean i shouldn't say everywhere else but it is objectively uh, that's not true but it is most people's favorite season in the u.s because it's like here it's uh not a ton of rain but it's like so it's drier during the day usually nice warm afternoons and then cool nights which is ideal for sleeping it's like it's such a yeah, weird take good. to hear somebody that they that they hate sounds like british summer yeah, I yeah, except for recently, I guess, when y'all have had to figure out how to buy your air conditioners and stuff cuz now it's uh oh, oh. climate change has caught up to rich, you. Rich British people are like, "Oh, it's so unbearably hot here. I can't live. I finally know what it's like to live in Texas." And it's like, "We have two days of 38 degrees and then it rains for 6 weeks." Like British people have no idea what warm even is. Um anyway, we had above 100 <laughs> Fahrenheit for something like 110 days in a row, uh, which... See what that is in real. I think it might be 38. Yeah, 38. Yeah, we had like one day of 38 in Bristol and people had a meltdown. Meltdown's a pun. $5 from Aubrey. Hashtag Team Arden. <laughs> Hashtag Team Orton, I like being cold and miserable in the rain and I cannot abide this slander against my misery. How dare you? Yeah, that's it. Like, if you like being depressed, if you like being cold and miserable and wet, then autumn's probably great. Like, you know, if you're if you're a slug and it makes it easier to slime around on the floor, autumn's probably great. But if you're like a normal functioning human, actually that's probably a bit derogatory. If you're not a horrible autumn slimy person, then yeah. <laughs> what I'm Summer. trying to impress upon you is you are using unrelatable examples to most of the world. So it's like it's like you're going like, don't you hate when you get your chips and they just put vinegar on without asking? But like in America, that never happens. We don't put vinegar on our <laughs> on our French fries. And so it's like it, it, it's like you're complaining about this thing no one can relate to. Autumn is like not that way in most of the world. Well, we're on a call in show about trans people, which is something most people can't relate to. So if you're here, you're already a weirdo or you're already ready to listen to people talk about things you have no idea what you're talking about. So pro-trans, anti-autumn, let's do it. <laughs> yeah, by the way, I just would like to point out that Katie hates literally the transition month. That is the month or the, the season of transition from one extreme to the other extreme uh the of all the seasons to hate she hates the one that is transitionary well i i like spring which is also transition month so really what i'm saying is i only like transition in one direction trans men are awful <laughs> hashtag quote katie montgomery right out on my tombstone i think if hashtag um, team autumn wins katie has to wear a festive fall button down like dad shirt like covered in yellow and <laughs> orange leaves or something i think that should be if oh, team hashtag team I, autumn wins i do i have a dress that's covered in autumn leaves that i one time dressed as a dryad um i can probably wear that next week but only if team autumn wins but do you and hate only if it gets 25 points. i hate autumn but do you hate the dress oh, and it's if green. not we got to get a shirt or something that you hate well, it's uh, it's a good booby dress, so it might be good for the show. <laughs> Man, I'm I'm torn between the two things I love, <laughs> autumn and uh, causing well, me pain and boobs. <laughs> we'll 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 make her do an autumn themed one. Uh, uh, if, okay, if hashtag okay. Team Autumn wins, and the, and if and if okay, Team I've... Katie wins, what is Autumn gonna do? Eat some warheads? Fuck autumn off forever. 
<laughs> everyone, everyone come into the show has to admit that autumn is the worst season. Four ninety nine from John Duran. Soup hug for Arden. Get well as soon as possible. And hello, Katie, the most black metal human outside of my house. Uh, but stage dives and slam pits. We called them that in the seventies and eighties. Good stuff. <laughs> The most black metal human outside of my house. I presume that means just you, but maybe there are like hundreds of black metal fans in your house. <laughs> uh, if so, maybe I should come over. That's not a real offer. Five dollars from Aubrey. Like, seriously, mate, is there a better place to find gads of creepy crawly insects than damp mess of rotting leaves? Where are your priorities? But it's too cold for it. Like, at the start of autumn, the end of summer, it's a good time for insects. And they'll just fucking die out. Like, too cold now, isn't it? Well, insects are going... I mean, we get mosquitoes at this time of year. And all the fleas show up when the heating comes on. But other than that, there's no good insects. Oh, crane flies. Actually, it is crane fly season at the moment, and they're, they're quite funny. Next. Everybody here thinks crane flies bite them, but they don't. They, False. You know, crane Rick flies are the ones that look like giant like mosquitoes, right? They're often called mosquito eaters. Yeah, yeah, they're really gangly. Um, Ricky Gervais, uh, who is a massive dickhead, um, helped perpetuate that myth. Fun fact. I I've been calling them mosquito eaters since I was since long before like Ricky Gervais was anybody. Everyone uh, calls the here people call them daddy long legs, which is also false because a daddy long legs is a type of spider and a crane fly is an insect. Mm, close type of arachnid. Daddy long legs are not spiders. What's that? Let's find out. This is more important than the show. They have a unibody. Uh, it's not what Wikipedia says. Right, we need to... Right, this show's now changing. <laughs> uh, this one says the family contains 1,800 individuals uh, of... Oh, of flus falsids, including those known as a cellar spider, daddy long legs, cum to spider, daddy long leg of vibrating spider. They are spider. apolionids, no. specifically. They aren't spiders. Oh, that is interesting. Oh, yeah, it includes harvestmen. Well, there you go. It, well, they are harvestmen. Harvestmen and daddy long legs are the same thing. Oh, wicked. That's pretty cool to know. And they still eat with, um, like spiders do. Not they, there's definitely some really. difference because first of all they don't they don't they can't make silk and they don't have venom glands so that whole thing about their bite is the most venomous bite in the world that's not true I've actually been oh, bitten shit. by that's them. the they, thing. they don't have what's that was that that's the Gervais thing oh the so liar, yeah, yeah that that's it's and then but they're the teeth are too small to puncture so you can't actually get bitten but if they could you would die they have no venom glands. Uh, but they also have a a, a a fused body, like a single um, body. Yeah, but this this has some pictures of some uh, two part body spiders on Wikipedia. I'm gonna do some more hardcore research into this. This is my goal for tomorrow, <laughs> other than work, of course. Um, anyway, thanks for your comment about uh, spiders or and or not spiders. There's a type of spider that's often mistaken for daddy long legs, and that's probably the two body ones that you're referring to. Just looking at Wikipedia. Uh, who knows? I will find out. There are, I'll read so some it's papers. like a, a skull spider. If you Google skull spider, look if that's the same one, or a cellar spider. Uh, same thing. Um, the two body. Let me look up what the. Yeah. Full oh, today is spider. the one. That's pretty cool. Yeah, that's that's what I was just reading. Just because on the Wikipedia it says it's a type of spider. Yeah, that's a it that's a, another type of anthropod that is often called a daddy long legs, but a true daddy long legs are harvestmen. Okay. Well harvestmen are wicked. I think harvestmen are underrated. I think they look really funny. I think they'd be friendly if they could talk English. Oh Skull yeah, the, the pictures cool. you get when you just look up harvestmen look quite a bit different than I think it's the European one. The Texas, uh, the Texas uh, one is the one that we have all over the U.S. They're ugly as hell. Okay, I'm gonna. 
Yeah, the okay, one you get back to work. Nice. Sorry, I'd rather talk <laughs> about this than you know. I wasn't even producing today. I put all the show together in like twelve seconds. I feel I got to go on some spider tangents. They're pretty gangly, right? Next, uh, Naresh uh, sent one sixty nine sixty nine. Nice, nice. Uh, just let me give you a hashtag team producer, then you can hang up on me. Oh, and Jimmy, go to both Thaya and ask Boethia. for the Trinimac treatment. <laughs> I don't know what this is. I'm going to give that team producer point to Team Autumn. Ugh, treachery. Naresh, what have you done? Ten dollars for Melissa. You have won second place in a beauty contest. Collect ten dollars. <laughs> Monopoly is the worst board game of all time. Don't fight me. You've already lost. Here, we'll do this to okay. help you get points. We'll do a true binary. <laughs> we'll do a true binary regarding these seasons. So the binary is hashtag Team Autumn or anything else that is in autumn. If you vote for any season that is in autumn, so you do Team Winter, Team whatever, any season that is in autumn, uh, that'll be a point for Katie. Anything that isn't autumn. Hashtag Team Save Children's Lives. Hashtag Team I Won the Lottery Yesterday. Hashtag Team Cheddar Cheese. They are all not autumn and therefore are on my team. Four ninety nine from Louise Richardson. Yay, trans beauties! Miss Universe Spain was trans in twenty eighteen, so the Iberian Peninsula rules. Hashtag, they just obviously have very beautiful women. <laughs> Hashtag Team Katie because why not? Why not? You meant to say because she's the best. Um, also, ninety plus countries in Miss Universe. Oh, okay, interesting. Yeah, I assumed it'd be a few, too many, but you know. So we're, we're really smashing it if we're up at over 2%. At the line, in classical logic, falsehoods imply anything, and anything implies a true statement. Thus, if A does not imply B, then B implies C. For any A, B, and C, of course, that's from Sean. Um, yeah, Sean, I think I might have seen this in a DM from you earlier, and I didn't reply because I was thinking about it. I didn't quite get it. I will have to think about the one more. Um, I told Sean we give give them a, a free one this week because they support so often but couldn't this week, so I said we'd give a freebie. Very kind. Thanks, Sean. I appreciate your DMs, even if, if I didn't respond this time. Sorry. <laughs> uh, Naresh with 123.45. Just a question for Katie. That's good because I'm the only one here. Out of curiosity... If the timing was right and you weren't to EP, would you go on another regular show on this channel? If so, which one? And another hashtag Team Jimmy because ha, huh, um, well Jimmy is technically not technically not autumn, so uh, it's a vote for me, I think, really. But um, I have been on other shows on this channel, or at least one other show, the other show on this channel at the time that I was doing it, which was the Sunday show. I've been on, I don't know, a few times. Uh, in COVID times when I could um, get away with staying up till 4 a.m. on a Sunday <laughs> uh, and then going to work the next day because <clears throat> I didn't have to get up and get dressed or anything. Um, yeah, I mean, I'd, I'd, I'd do any of the other shows, really. It's just is there are inconvenient times for disgusting British, so, you know. Next. Of course, I'd have to be invited as well. Um, Ten dollars from God hates astronauts. Um, by the way, God was an astronaut is a really good band. Um, AK Mike B trying out a new handle. Keep up the good work, but tell Jimmy to Jimmy his Jimmy. Only after the show has finished, or if he's on mute. Next, please. You're creating a hostile work environment. <laughs> good. <laughs> um, you're still saved as Jimothy Belland in my phone. Four ninety nine from John Duran. Hashtag Team Arden get well. Uh, oh, yes, is a different one. So we can have you up and ready to show Jimmy the air hug lover how to run the show from behind the curtain. Jimmy is okay. Love the show. <laughs> Thanks, John. Next. 
if you would. Thank you, Magic Man behind the curtain. Five dollars from Yeomanscode eighty four. Offended Englishman here, whose favourite season is the fall. I've sussed you out. No English person says fall. You're an American, poser. But now I live in the beautiful Pacific Northwest. <laughs> Fucking called it. Didn't even read ahead and I knew it. You're a traitor. So all is forgiven. Hashtag Team KT. Oh, no hashtag, no point. That is a shame, but thank you for your treacherous yeah, opinion. Who gives a shit today? You don't even have a co real co-host. <laughs> Let's give the point. Uh, you need all the help you can well, get. Yay. Also, I don't know about this this high five you just gave yourself when you're like, ha, I sussed you out. I, you're trying to lie. You lie. You're pretending to be any. And then like the next lines are, are, are whoever this I is. I hadn't read ahead, I promise. No, I know. But there was an implication of deceit when no deceit was present. It was deceit. Englishman who says fool. Deceit. Can't be true. You know what? I, I don't think I ever heard my British mother say autumn once. I think she fully assimilated to the word fall. Disgusting. Well, actually, I heard that originally fall was what British English said and autumn was what Americans said and it swapped over. But that might be one of those things that's just not true. So I'm not going to back it up. $10 from domestic. Hashtag Team Katie with a heart. Thank you very much. Um, twenty dollars from X million. That is a lot, or not many millions. Hey, Katie, love you all. Love all you do. Please give a shout out for of support for my beloved trans son Ripley. He could really use it at this time. Thanks. Shout out to Ripley. Um, shout out for having a cool parent. Uh, who's very really kindly donated to us. Um. Ripley, you'll smash it, and if you uh, if you really need the the booster, you're always welcome to call in and have a chat with us. Um, thank you very much. Did y'all got like fried cheese over there? Oh, Ripley, mozzarella Ripley. Sticks. Oh, I said Riley. Ripley. Yeah, we have mozzarella sticks. We are a first world country. <laughs> Is that relevant? Okay. One. I've I've been on a mozzarella stick kick. I'm trying to find the best ones. <sighs> wonder how they are. Right. I mean, they don't even have to necessarily be. In fact, I've had like the best I ever had were basically the same thing, but made with Asiago cheese, which I don't even know what that is. It might just be mozzarella by another name. I don't know. One time I went to a wedding and they had this like plate of cheese balls in breadcrumbs. And there was like five different cheeses, but they all looked identical and they were all mixed together. And there was like a there was a mozzarella one, and there was a feta one, and there was some goat's cheese one, and there was these, and it was like cheese roulette. And when I realised, I just kind of stood in the corner eating all the cheese. I, I think like for this whole wedding amount of cheese balls, I honestly ate like ninety five percent of them. We talking <laughs> think, about hot or cold? I think I just, uh, they were like warm. Uh, they they were like coming out the oven and then they got replaced and then I like ate all of them and then they would get replaced and then I'd like eat most of them and it was good. It was, it was the best bit at the wedding. Oh, I just slammed it. I'm not I'm not a slimes and dips person, but I would well, put uh, if there was like some chili options that that goes well with cheese. I think here marinara is a very common dip for uh, which is just like. I don't know. Do you guys use the word marinara? Does that word already mean something? I know what you like, mean. Just like tomato sauce -y pizza things. Pizza sauce, but, um, yeah. A little heavier on yeah. like oregano and stuff in it. Yeah. Oregano. Oregano. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, no, <laughs> that was the stupidest Oregano one. and cilantro. Look, there's, a lot of, there's a lot of words that sound quite a bit different, but the difference between oregano and or oregano... That just Oregano. that was so stupid. It's Oregano, the <laughs> you're the one who sounds silly. <laughs> Oregano. Oregano. By the way, it's a, it's a Latin term. It's a Latin based word anyway. And oregano is far closer to the correct pronunciation. Well, what do Italians say? That's what I want to know. Oregano. <laughs> I just made that up, but Much I moved my hand always. even though you couldn't see it. <laughs> I, it's probably close to that. Oregano. Oregano. Yeah, but probably. I, I, I pinched my Oregano. fingers. Oregano. That's why we say it, because we're European and we're better than Americans. That's why. Um, 
Anyway, next, please, before we go off oh, about that. Source. E sounds needs to be an A though. Oregano. Oregano. <laughs> Five dollars from Samantha Shepherd. Great show tonight, as always. Hashtag Team, K Team Katie. If it was a great show and it was just as good as always, that just shows that Arden is disposable. Thank you very much for saying that out loud, Samantha. I appreciate it. Next. <laughs> I'm sure she will love that. I mean, assuming she survives the night. I, I, I probably shouldn't make that joke, but you never know. It might pay off. Yeah, what if, what if she doesn't? Death. Now you've made it as a joke. <laughs> me one time i actually that didn't go well for me uh i won't go into details but i did make a similar joke once and it didn't work out um so i, I instantly regretted it this time 33 33 from dan hodemaker katie you're the bomb thank you very much when can we expect a new season of turf wars or the xx factor we need more katie content on youtube get better soon arden thanks to everyone at the line keep up the great work hashtag Team Katie. Thank you very much, Dan. Um, I don't know. I burnt out pretty hard from LGBT rights activism in general. Um <clears throat> doing like doing this show right now, I'm having a good time, but like beforehand I was feeling like, ugh, and to do my own stuff, like when I'm not people relying on me, it's just oh, I cannot be fucked. So I'm I'm seeing like I think I've I've done a lot of LGBT rights activism full paced for so long and it is it's pretty soul destroying but we've also got to a point where i'm slightly less stressed by it um i almost feel like we've hit the peak and maybe that's like famous last words but i don't know i i just felt like the need to take a break from it so i guess we'll we'll see i i would like to do it i i remember a, doing it i i really enjoy doing my own show and stuff and i'm enjoying this one but at the same time it's a lot of effort um we'll see i'll definitely do one again one day but not tomorrow <laughs> basically that's my stance um yeah thanks ten dollars from connor Brunda. Um, to clarify, I meant go fuck yourself, Jimmy. Forgot the proper phrasing. Awesome call, Katie. Thanks so much. No, too late now. You can't take it back. You said fuck off, Jimmy. So that's good. <laughs> it's too late. The damage is done. <laughs> uh, exactly. Um, five dollars from X Million. Oops, I meant to add hashtag Team Katie to my previous submission. Thank you very much, X Million. And again, shout out to Ripley. Which is a cool name, by the way. You could do a shorter version of Turf Wars as a segment for the Sometime Show, but that's that. I mean, because that's coming back. But then, then that's just you doing work now, also for free on top of everything else. So probably, probably <laughs> wouldn't want to do that, but it'd be fun. Yeah, it'd also be a lot of effort. I'm not saying no, but I'm not saying yes <clears throat> right now. Probably just need to take a break, like a good break. Yeah, I don't know. I feel like I get burned out. And then I take a, I've been on medical leave. This is my first show back in two weeks or something uh, because yeah. I've been doing stuff. And I, I don't know, I've, I've started to miss it a couple of days ago. And I've been working on my Donald Trump impression. I've been trying to make it more realistic. That's what oh, I've been doing in my time away. Because usually I do this sort of cartoony one, but this isn't what his voice actually sounds like. It's, it's a much more... Well, I, I'll, 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 everybody else... But this is the cartoon one. This is the one I used to do. <laughs> Uh, and I've been, I've been working on it. It's I, I'm so ready that, to debut it one day. The the good one. That is the real reason you should subscribe to this channel, so that you can hear Jimmy do that. And in fact, maybe I mean I don't want to pressure him right now, but maybe he will commit to releasing his new Donald Trump impression on the Patreon first, and then that'll be a reason for you to sign up to the Patreon. <laughs> no, that's weird. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. I don't know. I don't know. It's literally just all I did, uh, all I figured out though, is that if I make my throat scratchy, it's easier to do also. Uh, it's, it's all, it, to it's just, been it time well. It, yeah. No, it's, it's the difference. Of, if you dig this and you just, you make it a little bit scratchier and you bring it down and you say A, B, C, D, E, F, G, G, O, P, right for me. Uh, that wasn't the, my best, but that's off the cuff. 
It's just very, 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 I did everything right and they indicted me. <laughs> Sydney That's Powell good. pled guilty today. Did you know that? Oh, no, I know. That was pretty funny. Um, she's she's going to be testifying against all of the goons until they, they'll fall like dominoes now, won't they? That's uh, it's quite satisfying. Yeah, I mean, the only person who would have been more significant than her would be uh, Giuliani. I was going yeah, I was gonna say is it Rudy Giuliani? But like, like I didn't He's such a fucking clown. I don't know what he's gonna do, to be honest. He might go down with a chip. I think he I think something crazy is gonna happen. Like he's gonna just one day be naked jerking in on Times Square. <laughs> just something truly oh, like yeah. that Absolutely. I I could so see something crazy like that happening. Like who knows what he's gonna do. It could be really bleak as well. Like that that's kind of like funny bleak, but like it could also just be bleak bleak. So. Like something like he eats his son. Something real <laughs> weird. Like full cannibal. <laughs> yeah, something like <laughs> I wasn't gonna s I wasn't thinking of that. But yeah, yeah, that that is also also possible. And Rudy Giuliani's a real just... loser, but when he did, frankly, when he did the cannibalism, I thought I'd give him a second shot. I'd bring him back to my team. It's a, it's in the works. It's gotten better. I want it's, it to just sound great. exactly like him. You know what I mean? Not not cartoony. I want to be able to just be him at will. Mostly in the bedroom. And then. <laughs> have, you, have you read this super chat yet? No, because you keep interrupting me. 499 for ages. Don't hey, blame KG. me. <laughs> not my fault. It's Always my wish fault. you the best. In a sometimes hateful world. Thank you very much, Ben Nine Lives. That is very kind of you. Um, sorry that I kept getting interrupted by Donald Trump on this show. But Donald Next, Trump please. does say oregano, which you prefer. <laughs> no. you will, I'll come back. I'm gonna I'm gonna, no, mute, I'm gonna make my voice oregano. scratchy and you'll hear the bit difference. For some reason, if I have a scratchy, it's just like how my Stewie Griffin gets so much better if I have a cold. It just, it gets, if I have a cold, it gets perfect. So, <laughs> four, four, not four ninety nine, $5, much better than four ninety nine. from Unstillborn. Always love hearing what Katie has to say. That is good because I said basically three things in this episode and it lasted two hours. <laughs> Great to hear. Thank you very much. Next, please. And the next one is £10 from Helen Lawson. Hi, Helen. Hashtag love autumn. Ugh. You can have this point, Katie, if you embrace the season of layering clothes and hot soups. No, I don't want to layer my clothes. I want to wear something that looks nice, not some stacked up coat nonsense with 15 different layers. And I want to eat real food and not just sludge blended up and heated in the microwave. Rubbish. Go away, Ellen. <laughs> you have totally discredited yourself. Everybody loves fall. Everyone loves autumn. No, nope, it's not better right now. I've, I've got to... If, if, you wouldn't say autumn. Trump everybody doesn't know loves autumn. November. I don't remember the rest of the months right now. I don't remember them, but all of those fall months are the best months. Frankly, as far yeah. as I'm concerned, everybody says... These are the best months. We agree with you, sir. They say, sir. He's obsessed with saying people <laughs> call him sir all the time. This is sir. I bet he does like autumn. If you like autumn, it's because you like Trump. That's, that's what I'm saying. Four ninety nine from Poor Claire. Yay, this is the Katiest show ever. Hashtag Team Katie. Well, apart from like my own shows, because they don't have Jimmy interrupting me. But yeah, it's, it's pretty, the, it's I don't the know, high I can see. <laughs> I don't know. What's the problem with me uh, interrupting? I don't, I don't get it. <laughs> Thanks, Trump. There is no problem with you interrupting. That wasn't Trump. Okay. That was that was just me. I'm now, I, now I'm trying to interrupt you every time. <laughs> what are the points at? 19. Twelve points. Yeah, tw 12 points for me, I think. 1999 from Dennis Nunez. I hope we get a world where everyone is just defined as human. Love you guys. Yeah, that would be cool. 
Um, we're a little way away from that. And it looks like it's getting worse in some places at the moment. So that is bad. But yes, that would be great. Thanks, somebody, Dennis. somebody in chat asked, wait, is this atheist Jimmy? And I just really want to know what the fuck that means. Cause there's, I don't know if a, it's, yes, I am. I am an atheist called Jimmy, but are you not familiar with me and this being involved with this network? What are you? Jimmy, no one, no one knows who you are. This, this, people come here for me and they accidentally click on the other shows, if anything. Like, you know, people come here for Arden, people come here for flipping Ben, the worst host. <laughs> what can they do for you? Come on. You know I, just, I really don't want to be named Atheist Jimmy. I already had to do all that work to not be primarily Mr. Atheist. And it's only kind of work that still most often when I get recognized in places, like, oh my God, are you Mr. Atheist? I don't know why no. they sound like, uh, what's the name of that character? Oh my God. I've, Unknown. Whatever. Five Canadian dollars from gosh, the Eight echo is so terrible. Canadian five Canadian. <laughs> I'm gonna interrupt you more. Five dollars Canadian from Warboss. Hashtag Team Autumn. Oh, for God's sake! I love my hoodies and the leaves changing, and the changing leaves. Come to BC, Canada. It will change your mind. Canada's probably like minus twenty-five degrees at the moment. Uninterested. You could not. You could not get me somewhere so cold. Maybe you have summers where it goes above zero. And then I'm interested. Well, it's got to go above 25, really, for me to consider. BC is right above your Washington State. It's actually pretty nice over there. It's not. The is BC just before crazy. DC? That's pretty satisfying. Is there a CC in the middle? Washington State, not Washington, DC. <sighs> it's all the same to me. Next Two different place. Washingtons. Oh my God, you're going to be so confused if you ever come here with the number of places that are called, the number of streets called Washington. It's going to blow your mind. You may have a million different Birminghams, but there's only one Birmingham. One and no one wants to go there. Crash place. <laughs> uh, I went to Birmingham to go see Blink-182 two weekends ago, and it was really good, and I cried several times. And, and only I got stabbed four things. times. That's that's a good Birmingham night. My goodness. Birmingham is fine. It's okay city. It's uh Kidder. It's, we, it was a bit shabby in places, but you know. Birmingham, uh, just so everyone watching knows, ranch. Birmingham has a stabbing problem. Oh, yeah, it's not that bad. They're not as bad as London. Like I think the, the media likes to hype Birmingham as a really bad place because it's got high populations of Muslims in some places. That's where these like Muslim no go zones uh, idea came from. But it's just like it's just a city. Uh, well, not, they've got I wouldn't they've be got nervous Kitty over there. there as well, which is sort of the white trash stabbers. They've got what? Kidderminster. Oh, is that near Birmingham? I don't even know. Be pretty embarrassing if it was and you knew that I didn't. Oh, it's kind of near. It's kind of near. Yeah, maybe that. Yeah, those kind of satellite satellite towns are probably more trash. But I've never been there, so I can't comment. Jimmy, go daddy your long legs. Hashtag Team Autumn because it's the season I fall for every year. Someone ban the rash. <laughs> don't really, but also do really, but don't really. Anyway, thanks, Narash. Fuck you. Next, please. <laughs> Five pounds from Samantha Patrick. Hashtag Team Katie. I hope Arden gets well soon. Thank you very much, Samantha. I hope she gets well right now. Faith healer. I've just healed her. But only but only if you give me enough money to buy a private jet. Five dollars from Della Luna. Even though you don't like Monopoly. Hashtag Team Katie. Hashtag Team Winter. Monopoly is objectively bad like it's a terrible board game uh come on really you've never I played don't monopoly anyone. once in your life because nobody fucking does no one actually plays monopoly everyone plays my monopoly and monopoly itself oh, that's... is quite a good game and doesn't take eight hours okay. if you just play the actual rules that that is part of the reason i hate monopoly is because wherever you go to play it 
everyone's got their own fucking bullshit version of the rules where they've added in some rules that make it worse. And I have to say, why don't we just play by the actual rules of the game? They're like, oh no, because in our house, we always let the shoe move an extra one space. We always make it so you can buy all three in one go. We always do it. And it's no, fucking play by the rules or not. Or I'm not playing. 90% and then even of the when you time, play by the rules. 90% of the time, the game is just... The winner is whoever lands on free parking the most because they put some <laughs> bullshit rule about, yeah, if you land on free parking, you get all of the money that people have been putting in oh. up to that point. And so the game doesn't fucking matter anymore. And this is why we're here for goddamn days. That's, uh, that's a rule from Junior Monopoly that people learn and then carry across. It's trash. It's called free parking. You just park there for free. Shit doesn't happen. We live in a society, asshole. And you're supposed to be learning why There's capitalism is garbage. In Instead, you're making more extra capitalism rules. Like, you win lots of money <laughs> just for no reason. Call it inheritance. Uh, uh, it, the, the, it's an anti-capitalism board game, you guys. Figure it out. Fucking figure it out. Trash game. No, the ten dollars from Connor Runda. No, it's not. It's terrible. It's we terrible, were but it's made for a good pe people. piece there, and now you've just gone back into. I totally agree. The problem is the the house rules. The game without the house rules. I used to play almost every single night before bed. I'd play a couple of games on expert on my iPad. That's how I'd fall asleep. <laughs> that has changed my perception of you as a person. <laughs> not really. That's the most autistic thing you've ever heard. We already knew that about me. <laughs> Monopoly though. Um ten dollars from Connor Runda. Uh, um, Would you rather the, uh, it with is spider a... solitaire? Sorry, that joke was funny enough to me to interrupt, but go on. Uh yes. Is a gender nonconforming demon from Elder Scrolls and they ate Trinimac and then um expelled him disrespect in disrespect, changing him into a demon lord himself. Interesting. I've never played Elder Scrolls, but I am aware that it is either a game or a series of games, and I can't remember which. It's a series of games, Skyrim being the most recent one that's been really well. Elder Scrolls Online is kind of trash, but that's more recent. Uh, and I, you've just proven no one can trust your judgment of games. Never even played the greatest game of all time Pokemon Blue. I have played it, <laughs> Skyrim. <laughs> You can put Pokemon in Five dollars. That mod exists. Is it? That's pretty cool. Five dollars from Panda. Hashtag Team Katie because she is the best. Go fuck yourself, Jimmy. Thank you very much, Panda. Opinions. That's very kind. <laughs> well, I tell you, my actual favorite game maybe is Homeworld 1. If anyone's played that, shout out because not many people seem to have played it, but it's so good. Five dollars from domestic. Would you ever consider having a semiologist guest host or just to interview for answers to some of the topics in your last call? I am ignorant enough that I would have to Google what that even means. Uh, so I can't really comment until I have done that. Um, it says, Semiology is a discipline of linguistics concerned with the question, what does the word X mean? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Um, maybe not on this show, because uh, excluding the disembodied interrupter that you hear every now and then, uh, this is like trans people only. If there's a trans person who is a semiologist, then absolutely, that'd be great to have you on. But also maybe as another segment or on a different show that would be cool i thought it would be something that Next. combines seismology with semen <laughs> measuring the uh the richter scale of the orgasm <laughs> it's there's gotta be some number <laughs> that that information must be out that's there. true that's true i'll go get a meter um, and put it in my bum the cumometer. Ten dollars pounds even. Ten real ten real monies from Faye. Hashtag Team Arden, because I hear that US healthcare is super expensive. Also, hashtag team not autumn because it's not too hot and not too cold. 
Would you be for Jimmy doing a 24 hour episode with all the hosts? Go fuck yourself, Jimmy. Jimmy, do you want to do a 24 hour episode? I, yeah, I guess I misread the question. Would you be for Jimmy doing a 24 hour? That for sure is not going to happen because I can't do 24 straight hours. But doing a 24 hour episode on the line between our uh everybody that's probably what the plan is to celebrate hitting 100k but we haven't solidified that oh we're under a thousand we're only like 700 away or something something cool only 700 maybe if everyone who watches this episode subscribes could make the difference that'd be cool um yeah i'm up for participating in that but not for all 24 hours Next, please. Unless we talk about spiders and Pokemon, then I could probably do 24 hours. Yeah, but you don't even know what is and isn't a spider. Fire. So what are we going to talk about for 24 hours? I have not conceded the last point you made. I'm going to research it and come back next week with spiders. That daddy long legs aren't spiders? You haven't conceded that yet? No, yeah, I haven't researched. I'm not taking your word for it. I'm going to see what the uh, spiderologists say. <laughs> I'll find, I'm going to find one. one. I'm going to book one on this channel. That's been my new move. When I fight, I've been fighting people in VR. I've been debating a lot of people in VR and they'll be like, well, physics says blah, blah, blah. And I'll be like, not only are you wrong, I just sent a text and booked a physicist so you can call on this day. And every time they say they're going to do it and prove me wrong, they never call. That'd be good. Let's have... Uh, Right, okay, this is one of these things where I don't really want to admit it, but there's blatantly a correlation. I bet that a disproportionate amount of whatever the word for spiderologist is, of them are trans people. I I bet that's a fucking thing. So there's got to be a spiderologist, trans person out there who wants to come and be the co-host on this show. (laughs) So we can uh, talk about sex, but spider sex instead. That's, That's the goal for this show. Anyway, next please. No, no, I haven't read this one out yet. <laughs> one twenty three forty five from Naresh. If you ask Malakath, new form of Trinimac about it, he will say the story about his transformation is greatly exaggerated. So, allegedly, I don't know what all you Elder Scrolls people are on about, but I'm sure you're having a good time. <laughs> Next. Seven ninety nine Australian from Debbie Hode. Hashtag Team Autumn. Oh, Debbie. The first Australian donor of the night, and you've let us down. Let us... Oh, I was going to make a shit pun there. Now I'm backing out of it. This has been... Oh, I haven't even read that one out. Can we go back, please? Um, thank you. This has been great to stumble upon. What time in what time zone does it usually start? I only caught the last 30 minutes. Um, it's usually 8 p.m. UK time or 2 p.m. Can't remember what time zone Jimmy's in. Central. Central. 2 p.m. Central American time. So Australian time. That translates to I have absolutely no idea. Um, actually, I could look it up. Why not? While well, we're just doing it, we're dragging this bit out anyway. 8 p.m. UK time in Australian. Oh, you have more than one time zones. In uh, Canberra, it's 6 a.m. <laughs> Do you know what's funny? Is I was going to say that. I was going to jump in and go, I think it's 6 a.m. there. But then I doubted myself and I didn't. So now I'm saying this after the fact and I could just be lying. Jimmy would never lie because... No, I love lying. Lying's <laughs> fun. <laughs> I, I I just always admit when I'm lying, because I, but I lie as... I, I like to do bits and half of doing bits is just lying. There you go. You can't trust anything anyone on the show says. 699 Canadian from Stephen Nicole. Hashtag Team Katie. Thank you very much. I would also love more Katie YouTube content, but you need to take care of you first. Thank you very much, Stephen. There will be some more in the future. Uh, $5 from a real person. Hashtag Team Katie. I'm glad. I assume that everyone else who has super chatted has not been a real person, and that's why this one is distinguished as such. Um... Yeah, I'm sure I'll do more YouTube stuff in the future. Next, please. Let's see if we have any more real people lined up. 
No, it's a fake person, Naresh. 50, check crowns. You two got distracted and Katie forgot to actually read my super chat with hashtag Team Ripley. So this is a reminder, plus Team Autumn. Sorry, Naresh. That is, I, I am going to say, entirely Jimmy's fault. Um, yeah, and hashtag Team Ripley. Shout out to Ripley. Um, I think this is it. I think we did read it. Hashtag Team Ripley. Maybe. Well, we've read it out now, haven't we? Ripley is not Autumn, so just saying. But they also said Team Autumn. Yeah, but, you know, fuck Naresh. See you right there at the end. (laughs) (sighs) The angry face, that is how I feel when Autumn starts. Five euros from Daisy. Mayo is extra comforting in full. See, this this is exactly what I'm talking about. Slime apologists are the kind of people who like Autumn because they like suffering. They like causing other people suffering. So that is why people like Daisy, slime apologists, slimy, Team Mayo, can't, Team Kate is worthless here. That's the vote for Autumn. I prefer Spring Forever despite allergies. No, you're a slimy Autumn lover and there's no escaping your fate. Um, thanks in quotes. <laughs> Did you know that Next, mayonnaise is considered like the most effective but also non-harsh chemical treatment for lice. Did you know that uh, mayonnaise is considered the most effective contraceptive because I would not have sex with someone who is touching mayonnaise? Right, but uh, not if like you got pregnant lice, anyway, would but... you use it for to get rid of it? Uh, no, I would welcome the lice to their new home because... Mayonnaise is disgusting. See, they lice and me have at least that in common. That and our desire for human fluids. Wait, what? Five dollars from Panda. I've never much. heard. That sounded so <laughs> gross. I've never heard of alternative rules for Monopoly. What is this rubbish? Who doesn't follow the rules? Bellends. Yes, exactly. They are the people who follow don't follow the rules. Which is basically every single family at Christmas. That is what I found. Do you know most people also don't know that you don't have the option to pass on buying a property? You can either buy or put it up for auction. And that, yeah, everybody thinks, oh, a reading railroad. Uh, no, I'll pass. Can't do it. You're not playing the game. Play the actual game, assholes. Exactly, Fine, you pass. But also I'm going to buy it for $1. You already dropped out of the auction. Okay? Eat me. But do play Monopoly with me. <laughs> you know, I do. I recognize that I'm making it sound like no one should play with me. Do you know another shit game that everyone likes is Risk or Rubbish Game? I quite like Risk as well. Uh, of course you do. <laughs> that one's... That, it, the, there's, that's also in my rotation of iPad games to fall asleep to. It's it's basically Risk, Monopoly, and Sudoku are the things that I do to fall asleep. I have been playing the original Game Boy Color Pokemon cards game to fall asleep. Um, oh, Ted Canadian that, from I, I do the the uh, that online I do sometimes also fall asleep. That's in the rotation. The the you know you can play the full thing on the internet for free from the Pokemon Company, and it has like all the modern cards and stuff too. And then if you buy real Pokemon oh, yeah, cards. Yeah. They come with little inserts, and you can redeem them. Yeah, I'm uh, I'm fully addicted to Pokemon cards. Um, I uh, got uh, to whatever rank one thousand is, Alakazam. I don't know. Um, I'm 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 getting pretty good. Wow, uh, I'm also yeah, way into. Do you have a re- Do you have a physical collection? I do. I've got I've got some cards right here. I thought I'd already told you about this, but obviously not when you've been on the show. I'm. I'm proper hooked to Pokemon cards. Like, I, we should talk I, about this. <laughs> I, ju- I drown women out when they speak. Uh, it's probably just that. No, I'm kidding. We haven't <laughs> talked about... Are you, so is your collection more of a functional for... for, for I was going to say dueling because I'm from Yu-Gi-Oh! I do Yu-Gi-Oh! too, but from competition collection or is it more like a collection collection? I am mainly interested in playing the game, but like I have, I have, I have all of the folders for the or portfolios, whatever you want to call them, for all of the 
D rank to current, so D, F, G that have come out, uh, if that means anything. Um, and I'm I'm doing all right. And it's just fun. It's a good time. But yeah, I mainly like playing the game. <clears throat> I'm, I almost only play the game online. My physical collection is more of like a collection collection. Cool. Oh, we we should have a we should do a battle. Hell yeah, I'm down. Oh, It'll be okay. sad because I don't know. People really people their friendships get messed up when you play somebody that you can never beat. <laughs> yep. If uh, potentially. <laughs> anyway, um, ten Canadian dollars from Erin. I'm an entomologist, and I agree with Jimmy about the deadly long legs. Okay. Well. I'm sure that that will be the truth then. I'm still going to research because it's interesting. Hashtag Team Autumn. Ugh, maybe I don't trust you anymore. Oh, look at this fucking cheating going on. I can see it happening right, right before my very eyes. They said the magic words. Um, I agree with Jimmy. Oh, Jim, Jimmy is right. Oh, I thought you were just going to say Jimmy and Daddy in the same sentence. <laughs> oh, no, that's... This has been a weird episode. This is what happened when Sir Arden is gone. Me and Jimmy lose our minds. 123 at 45 from Naresh. Did you know that mayonnaise on an escalator is going upstairs? So see you later. I don't get it, but okay. <laughs> Disgusting. Next, please. No, we're done, but you did lose. Who knows oh. by how much? So you got to wear an ugly fall dress. Okay. I'll, I'll show you the option that I already have, but I guess I could get one. But the other the problem is, is it's probably not going to work the green screen, so I might just have to... Oh, maybe I could blue screen, actually. That's an option. Anyway, thanks, everyone, for sitting through this show where I just talk and then Jimmy interrupts me that lasted... <sighs> Four hours, five hours, I don't know, something like that. It was a long time. But it was a fun time, and I think we had some good discussions. Um, hopefully, Arden will be better and back next week, but maybe not. So, who knows? <laughs> um, no, I, 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 hope, I hope she does get better. Please do like and subscribe. We're obviously reaching near, near 100k, so that is really exciting. And please do check out our Patreon, patreon.com forward slash call the line, because I think that's what it is. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, um, because that is how this show gets made. Um, an amazing thank you to the call screener who was Jess from Canada. <clears throat> thanks, Jess, and also thanks to all the mods in the chat for sticking with us for what seemed like twenty four hours of your day. Um, I hope you had a good time, and we will see you all next week with some more transatlantic antics. That that wasn't meant to alliterate. I don't think this is the Bye. updated list. I'd like to remind everybody that I became the producer today last minute. I think that there's this, this list is probably outdated. This isn't the right music. No. <laughs> But you don't have long music for it. It should be this. We don't have the yeah, longer yeah. version of the song. Bow, tick, bow, 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 bow. All right, go to Patreon. Give us money. We need it. God, we need it because I'm I'm trying to book. Uh, I've been I've been researching. There might line con. It might be happening. Okay, bye. <laughs>